The recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment. What's going on, guys? This is Scramjack. How you doing? Oh. I'm the American. Coming to you from an undisclosed location <laughs> in South Dakota. <laughs> Rapid City. Up in Black Hills. And I'm the black dude. So it's hard to find me. It's very hard to find me. But it's another episode of Scramjet. Uh, you got me on here. Like I said, American. A lot of people know me as a sauce boss, but uh, I do what I do. You got a bunch of vets on here just kind of hanging out, shooting the shit, doing stuff. We already got people on here. Uh, Larry, how you doing? Uh, no shots. That's not what we do. We don't do call-ins. Like I said, it's just us talking about what we do, talking about who we are, and talking about what's going on. Yeah, uh, sure. I'd like to uh, let it off to Uncle Cy up in here. Uncle Cy doing what he do. Uncle, say hi. Hello, everybody. All right, cool. Uh, w. Great intro, Great intro. Reverse camera. <laughs> I learned. Oh, uh, yeah. Hold on. One of these. One of these is. What's up, like, guys? It's W. It's another Tuesday night scramjet. Uh, that's just something we named the show. We didn't even know we were going to do it. So just kind of stuck. What are, you, what are you doing, Felix? I'm f- trying to figure out my brain. Hey, what's Mars, up? Uh, Mars anyone in here, just want to know, you have to let StreamYard you like know who you are if you want to be known in here user uh facebook user um <laughs> someone that knows me so what's up go ahead <laughs> anyway yes facebook user go and let stream yard i forget the permission Don't yeah permission them. let them let them know I bless who's you. hopefully yes. a couple of other friends i shared it with some of my little veterans little chat groups from turkey and stuff but what's going on i'm w i'm the idiot with the car in the background that'll never get built um actually did make some progress on it this week but uh no just a tuesday night show we saw a hole we wanted to fill it as usual <laughs> uh, no, no, no. we can talk about whatever i got a couple things in my mind you know conversations yeah. with other people jay hey it's baby dreidel. what's up it's like dreidel but with a j <laughs> dreidel <laughs> just an no, inside I mean, outside joke this is a this is a kind of a free format show um, like I said, no call-ins, no real shots, casual, whatever. We'll talk about some issues that we want to talk about. If anybody wants to bring anything up and we get into something, you know, awesome. Uh, we'll try not to talk over <laughs> each other. Try. This is hard with Felix. Sauce Boss has got a saucy mouth sometimes. So. <laughs> oh, it's wrapped up. That was my final. That was my final. I'm good. Sauce boss with the soft mouth. Quit talking shit and buy some internet that's like not Y2K. <laughs> trying to be like Mini, man. I'm trying to be like Mini. Have my own like five minute. Looking like you're looking like we're playing freaking. What's that freaking game? Mind Space? Mindscape? Mindscape. That, that the kids play? Minecraft. Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, looking like Minecraft over here. I just told his age says Minesweeper. Minesweeper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I have that played game. that. I have I played that last it. year. I have not played. I don't even know how to find it on the computer anymore. Oh, you can download it. It's easy. I know, but isn't it like supposed to be like in your settings? Like always, always like in your settings or some shit. I, I downloaded an emulator or something like that. No, it's actually like I, I, I remember I Minesweeper was always like you hit settings yeah. and then you went somewhere and it was like sitting in there. Yeah, you go to. Yeah, games. It was, it was it was under games you had Dark and Solitaire for like the longest time. That was all, the only two games you had the option of. Yeah, hmm. mm-hmm. that's weird. That's weird. Anyway, Minesweeper, you definitely showed your age. Thanks, I and all of ours because we all knew it. Exactly. <laughs> all right, five minutes in. Sorry, you, you can't find it. Uh- I'm actually, I just was sitting there typing it in. I don't know. I sweeper. Nope, it's not pulling up. Mine, M I N E, sweeper, or is it sweet aper? Mine, like mine's in the ground. I know. All right. Mm. Good night, Leslie. Sorry we started so late. Like, literally, I just put my kids to bed. That's why I can get on. So, yeah, that's the only reason we started as late as we did. 
a former Marine that's afraid of bumblebees in her car. She jumped out one time, did oh. a whole thing like this outside of her car. And I was like, way to go, Marine. Was she doing uh, the Chris Farley on Tommy Boy? Yeah. She was totally doing <laughs> Run for your life. Save yourselves. Talking about yeah. Chris Farley today. Man. Liberals. <laughs> oh, God. No, no politics, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, very light politics. We'll, we'll go. Ah, we're all veterans. We all have our state of mind and uh, yes. feelings about certain things. We get too deep into it. We do privately, but you know, it's not for debate here. There's, you can go watch any other news outlet for that crap. So. Yeah, we don't talk about the true president of the United States, Oprah Winfrey. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> That's who's gonna take power. Yeah, yeah, you got me. You got me. Tyler she Perry just needs to do a Medea takes takes over. That'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hold up. Yes. Get out of my way. Like, let me in this office. <laughs> what you doing? No, no, come here. Come here. Come here. First of all, you do? international waffle fries. <laughs> Medea comes up out of a crowd of reporters and just takes over the um, speaker's podium and is like, first off, no, I'm in charge now. This is the way we're going to do things. <laughs> Oh goodness! So, what'd you guys do today? Go ahead, Cy. I um uh, took somebody out. Uh, I did one of those add somebody to my wow. phone, you know. So I got a couple extra bucks during the month. They got a decent deal on a phone and a phone package, and you know what? now they're you know you can add a friend or family line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did one of them. You started it off with, uh, oh, I took somebody out today. Like, uh, oh, no, yeah, no, no. oh, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just coming from you, you never know. Yeah, no, so um, I had to go out and people today. Oh, it was like okay, one sorry. of those things I was like, size, so like, yeah, I, I signed up for this app where I take people out and I make money. I'm like, Sai, you're a freaking pimp. You're a hitman, bro. What's up? I take so, you out. This is what I wear when I go out to public. <laughs> out to public. Are you I in wear, Iowa? I wear nothing. I think I saw the more masks in South Dakota I've ever seen the day was today. Like I was looking around like, wow. Then I see like one person without a mask. I'm like, yes. <laughs> it, is straight, it is straight down here, man. It is fiscal for me because my job requires them. So, And if I get sick down here, they are going to require me to – Take my leave. Well, so, you see, you see where they just okayed it that employers can deny you work if you don't get the COVID vaccine. Yeah, what is yeah. People, peopling yeah. is overrated. Yeah, yeah. you're exactly. right. Yeah. Facebook is way extremely overrated. <laughs> I do it when I have to. I, I'm Facebook user, who are salesman. you? Who are you? It's probably like five different people. But yeah, no probably. So for my uh, day, it was pretty decent. Uh, started off hold a on, little rough. Hold on. Was oh. Uncle, Uncle done? Was Uncle done? Yeah, you were yeah, talking. Was, um, no. Um, anyway, I had to go out and people today and try to get somebody off the phone line, and it didn't work. But the guy standing there was like, you know, hey, that's a freaking hell of a mask. I never thought of getting something like that. And I was like, dude, if you're going to have to do it, why not have some fun with it? You know? Awesome. Absolutely. All right, my bad. I don't know. I was just commenting on his day, just like I'll comment on yours if you let Go me. Go ahead, Web. I want to hear about your day first, brother. No, I'm down. I'm at the bottom. You go. <laughs> You're at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> when you're running uh, the show, you can go last. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm on producer level. We'll, we'll see how Talk. fast I grow. You you're still? Yeah, yeah, I'm I I talking. I am talking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, uh, slow day at work. Uh, Shut your mouth when you're talking to me. <laughs> Shut your mouth when you're talking to me. <laughs> no, most people, of course, three day weeks, they're going to take it off because you take six days of leave and you get, I don't know how many days straight. You know what I mean? I could have taken three days, three days of leave and had 11 days off, but I, I should have done that because I didn't know their game plan explicitly. But whatever, I'm still taking care of maintenance issues out at the plant. Little random stuff, some bigger preventive maintenance issues. I uh, got a great group of guys I work there with me for maintenance, and we had a little conversation today. 
Can we get into this now? Yeah. Well, you can go for it. Just a little bit. Well, it's my, hey, it's my day. It's my day. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, have you ever seen one of these? And he shows me a video of a Tavor 12S. It is a rotary magazine shotgun from Tavor IWI that makes the, you know, the bullpup assault rifle for Israeli Defense Force and all that stuff. Anyway, a rifle. You know, I know it's a bullpup, but whatever. I mean, they're kind of cool. They're plastic. They're polymer. They're new age. Not a tough thing as an assault rifle if you never assault anybody with it. Oh, did I say assault rifle? Yes, you did. Oh, my God. You better go get a vaccine. I apologize. (laughs) I apologize. Assault is a verb. Um, Anyway, well, you show me this shotgun. and I'm like, what do you need that for? Not like I'm going to discourage anyone from getting a firearm and properly training on it, but like, what what would you use that for? You going hog hunting or something like that from a side by side, and you're just do 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 like unloading semi auto, rack the tube, fifteen shots, you know? Because that'd be yeah. awesome, you know, a little bit of extended barrel on it, a little bit more accuracy would be awesome. He's like, nah, man, I'm gonna keep it behind the seat of my truck. <laughs> Well, Why I would you you live around cows? Because that's kind of oh, weird. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, why? Why would you? Me personally, this is just my opinion. If you're in your vehicle away from home, you're gonna want probably the best quality. This is my opinion. Best quality firearm that you can afford and can learn to shoot inexpensively with you. Because if you're ever away from your home where you're comfortable, you're going to be in an uncomfortable situation besides your vehicle. You want something you're comfortable with. Just my just my thoughts. That's why I bring you know, Astro Glide everywhere I go. I know, I know. But no, I mean, yeah, every, uncomfortable situation. A lot of people watching the show probably can still carry. Obviously, I do when I can legally. I don't own um, any guns. I sold them on an auction. See, we're not going to even get into that as political because I won't tell you my really? opinion about that. <laughs> mine, were all lost a, mine were all lost in a tragic boating accident here in Lake Iowa. I use slingshots and sh- sharp words. I actually have a slingshot and marbles. The cops got called to my house because I threatened to shoot a stray dog. And Who is a Facebook user? They're not going to say anything now. <laughs> and the, poli- the police were like, we, we got told you were going to shoot this guy's dog. And I'm like, yeah, with my slingshot and marbles. And the cop actually looked at me and went, who are you, Dennis the Menace? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I was just thinking about that today. You know, I just, I'm not post-apocalypse brained or anything like that. But you got, as a veteran, you're trying to be prepared. I know who our Facebook user is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's a Marine. Over here. It's okay. Someone about, throw some crowns uh, on the ground and keep him occupied for a couple days. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. Ashley Moon Butler. Star child. No, I don't know. I just don't see why. Unless you're clearing rooms, clearing rooms, like you, you need something with medium. For me, it's medium range. Just logic tells me. And Shelly, yeah, it is multiple people. And we got Redneck Pimp up in there, too, in the background, trying to be all high side. Uh-oh, this is Redneck uh-oh. Pimp. I don't know why his <laughs> not stuff not flying up. And that's Marine, Mr. Mickey, thanks for using the yes. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. It's all the you know propaganda I've been listening to day in and day out. <laughs> can we sh- can we show can we show weapons? Well, no, you no, can show no, weapons no. with no mags in them that are yeah, it's, it's replicas. Completely. It's a replica, right? It's a replica, and it's completely clear. <laughs> of course, it's a replica. Yeah. This is like my truck gun. It's a freaking Daniel Defense. I don't really trust a lot of things. I'm not going to put a DPMS in my truck. But if I need it, one to four scope, nice little Veltor, uh, buttstock, CMC trigger, um, just a good all around weapon, mostly stock, but man, it nails them at 100. But two point sling, nothing crazy. Want it comfortable, want it versatile. That's my opinion on a truck gun, car gun that you can carry like a little bit extra firepower. You know what I mean? My truck is my gun. <laughs> oh man, yeah, my truck too. Like if I got to, but if you run down in a situation <laughs> where your pistol was just not cutting it, like you're like, ooh, I'm running low on ammo, and this guy's still coming after me. Like, what no, I'm you running want? you over first before I pull the trigger because I have full Dude, coverage I'm, insurance. I, well, 
Dang it, what if somebody shit? Dave's going Assassin's Creed up in here. Oh, God. That's Mall Ninja style, bro. <laughs> like I said, I use my wit and sharp words. But like, yes. They That's try it. to fight me, and I'm like, your mother never loved you. <laughs> you want to be, you know, the great man. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy. Your kids don't like you at all. Your wife is cheating. <laughs> oh Your yard new, looks horrible. New strategy. New, new strategy. That's a new so strategy, my right? day was uh, started out kind of different. Like I said, everyone in my house is home Ooh. right now. And in, in a couple hours, it's going to be even more full. So my normal morning getting up, doing my ticky talkies, um, cooking, talking to people was a little bit different. So, um, but uh, packed up a couple orders, sent out to some folks. Still doing that every day, every day, every day. I'm hustling, doing my thing. I was just thinking of that song. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I listen to that song every day. I listen to it every day. But we got out, went around, uh, took a drive, cleared my head, then uh, went and started hitting up some wholesalers, which was a great idea because I had one wholesaler. You know, they needed a couple couple cases, so I was like, "Cool, two cases, bingo." Then I went to one where I'm all every time I walk in there, it's like the same sauce. And everything. Hi, Sam. Yeah, that was Hi. my wife. She's kids are in bed. She's wrapping Christmas presents and a bunch of other crap. So. But uh, <laughs> so I went to one wholesaler. Someone's in the kitchen. Cool kitchen store. I can't walk out of there. I bought some new olive oil. I don't even need it, but I bought it. Um, Love olive seventy dollars. Yep. I'm like, holy shit. But the oh, cool thing what? is, well, no, because they sell you the jar and the oil. But when you run out, you just bring the jar back and they fill it up. Oh, it's fresh press then. Like it's, it's yeah, okay. fresh press. Uh, they, this company, Olive or however you say it, they go to actual. They're from Wyoming, but they actually go to Italy and get their reaping of olives and pressing, yeah. and they put them in barrels and they bring them back over here, and then they infuse them with a multitude of different flavors. Right. Amazing stuff. You guys will hear about it on uh, Barbecue and Bourbon, which will have its first live show hopefully this Friday. Starting at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time, but anyway, we digress. Um, on um, VRS, on VRS, it'll be on VRS. Oh, where my podcast is usually is, it's usually pre-produced. But yep. uh, I was talking to somebody; it's a surprise. We'll get it out there. I got some more to do. Anyway, uh, I went over there now. and I went to my shelf where my stuff usually is because it's not my shelf; it's theirs, and it's on the top. And I walked in and there was like five mustard sauces. That's mustard rubs. That's it, and a bunch <laughs> of other stuff. And I was like looking around, like I know it's been a minute since I've been in here, but they was a full shelf front to back with at least really? six or seven plus jars of one, just one on there. I'm looking yeah. around the shelves like, did they move me? Like, <laughs> they're not carrying my shit no more. And one of the ladies that worked there walk up and she's like, hey, what's up, man? I'm glad you stopped in. I'm like, why? What's up? She goes, yeah, we sold out. I'm like, you you Thanks. had Thanks for you had like a whole bunch of sauce like over two weeks ago. She goes, yeah, this lady came in. And this another lady came in, and they all bought like multitudes of jars and rubs, and they just kind of like ask, kept asking if we had more. And I'm like, "You guys didn't call me, like, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm you cool. got my number." So no, it was cool. Like that's right there off the jump. That is five Good. cases of product. Five cases. Yeah, mind you, I'm out of my mild rub right now. I'm pretty much out of mild rub and spicy rubber out in 13 ounce jars. Um, so if anyone orders them right now, you'll be waiting about a week to maybe two weeks to talk oh, fulfill man, those just because of the holidays. Really good. But though. we have two pounders. So if you really need it, we still got two pounders, but uh, that was kind of cool. That was kind of a boost. I always love selling sauce. And it was one of those things where I was over by the shop. I wasn't going to stop, but I was like, fuck it. Let's stop. And, uh, it was cool. Picked up some olive oil, looked at some knives because I they have some really good sales going on on some really nice uh, uh, Asian. I can say it the Oriental knives because or- Oriental means an item. Um, some n- nice Oriental <laughs> knives, really cool for really cheap comparative to what they normally cost a couple hundred bucks. These are like one hundred fifty dollars. So I might upgrade my knife game this holiday season. Hopefully, if the gods, getting... you I'll, know. I'll I, I picked. I did pick one out. Just one caveat um, that uh, mm-hmm. I saw and I wanted. It's one of the Serbian cleavers. Mm-hmm. It's like kind of rough hone at the top or whatever, and it's big. You can use. Was it, it bathed in the blood of virgins? Uh, maybe we'll see. Hold on, let me ask Dean. Did you get cut by this knife? 
Good. <laughs> Good. I'm just saying. I'm a bit <laughs> but uh, that right. was kind of cool. Um, Say hi. Hi. Who are you broadcasting to? Ah, uh, this will be later. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to see myself uh, on some weird fetish either. porn. I'm just saying. If not, I want 10%. Well, I'm just glad they can't hear what you're saying. So, <laughs> but uh, so no, that was kind of cool. Uh, stopped around, got some uh, stuff for burgers, picked up some you know stuff to fix some stuff around the house. Yeah. Um, but that was a nice, nice uh, boost to the day being able to because wholesale with everything going on, people were still buying stuff because of COVID, but it seemed and not the COVID at least, it seems because of our recent um. Uh, what would we call it? Uh, presidential, uh, what do you call it? Reality show that just happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people were kind of scared in this state, at least not scared, but they were, they were a little, um, they're going for under the, under the gun. Yeah, they're going so for that kind of people from yeah, that kind of stopped people from buying. So that kind of shows me, even though I got family in town, I still had to work. I still got to do what I do. So I'm still going to try to hit up some of the wholesalers this week just to see if the people are open and what you know what they need. Because who knows, you know, if people have run and done that stuff just because I've been you know doing my work pushing. So it was good to see hard work paid off, paying off, yeah, paying off we'll dividends. Talk, you know, we'll talk, we'll God is good, hard work is better. Yeah. I don't know if that's something, but it should be. We'll talk strategy oh, really? for holidays later. Yeah, yeah, you were killed. You were killed. You know, and uh, I did smoke. I did come off of a, a two-day hog smoke. So I smoked the hog. I started it at 10 o'clock Friday morning, which I started TikTok. Is that what you're, that what you're talking about, Cy? Yeah. And okay. well, uh, okay. Hog roast, and then he went right into the vendor sale, and he had like about you know six hours of sleep in four days. You know? <laughs> and uh, so I did. I did the hog smoke on Friday morning at ten o'clock after coming back from downtown, picking up some stuff. Got the smoker out there, got it lit, got the hog on. You know, got it all probed up. That six yeah. probes, in the, no, seven probes in a hog, one probe for ambient temp. Um, all probes survived except for two, which are fine. The cheaper ones I put on the bottom. Um, they were just to kind of tempt the fat, the belly fat, but um, the Thermo Pro, Thermo Pro. Well, Thermo Pro, I got new yeah, ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to get another a right, couple more Thermo Pro. I just probe. ordered some more. I ordered an, an, just an ambient temp probe, which is not sharp tip; it's blunted. Yeah, yeah. I bought. I ordered one of those guys, and then I ordered some more probes just because. But anyway, we did that hog smoke. It went off great. Um, I brought the whole hog up to 200. I delivered it hot. That was kind of interesting. So. Every hog I've ever smoked, you smoke on site. Um, even the hog me and Webb smoked was technically on site. We just had to move it from a smoker to a table and bring it inside. Well, yeah. this one was smoked all the way from 10 o'clock Friday morning till Saturday night at 5. five. Technically, it smoked till 6 because that's the rest of the story. I had to bring it into town. <laughs> So I had to call to get someone to follow me in a car as I drove a lit smoker through the hills. Oh, yeah. Luckily. And they were following me to watch for any embers or anything like that. Even though I had the firebox wrapped, it's still just to look Uh, because I wrapped it with a heat blanket. And then um, I drove (laughs) down. I passed, I think, every sheriff, every sheriff, even some. They probably called some people in for the holidays. Hey, could you just sit on the corner of this place and follow you? You know, yeah. Well, not that. It was just like I, I would pass some guy getting pulled over by the sheriff. And then I get to a red light and I caught every light between my house and where I was going. Every light I hit red. And I'm sitting there, smoker sitting there going. And of course, after a couple seconds, the smoke catches up with the vehicle. And my whole vehicle and area is embellished by just smoke. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Oh my god! You know, and I'm driving through town. I I dropped the hog off hot. They were happily impressed. I'm like, good job. I'm glad you think yeah. this is cool. <laughs> Get that freaking hog off my shit. Put your hog on the table. I'm going to a car wash so I can cool this motherfucker off. Well, the cool thing about my smoker is that there's two. It's an air. the The smoker, the smoke box, is a big air tank, and even the fire box was an air, a smaller air tank. Well, there's two inlet holes on, well, three inlet holes on the whole smoker. Two on the bottom on each side and one on top. 
Well, you bring it to a car wash, and I wasn't a dick. I rolled it out of the car wash, you know, but through, pulled, and you can stick the hose in one of those and just sit there and blast it on full blast without going out. Of course, there's charcoal yeah. dumping out the bottom, and I'm yeah. just sitting there just knocking it down. It took me probably five minutes to get the fire out, like fireman fire out, like not wet log, steaming, and then it starts up when it gets air. This was out, yeah. out. And I pulled it out, and then the guy working the car wash, oh, I got it, man. I'm like, hey, man. I went and took his push broom, and I pushed all my shit into that center ditch. And he's like, I can do that. I'm like, dude, I said, if I would be in your car wash, I'm going to leave everything. I would leave a dead elephant in this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, but this is outside the realm of where you should have to go pick up some asshole shit. I said, yeah. I'm going to sweep it in here. I got it. It's fine. So I took the push broom, and I swept it up into the middle. And then rolled out and went home, you know, happy. But no, that was kind of that was kind of cool. And like Dave said, I got home. I talked to uh, this cat I met on TikTok, who is a Air Force vet, uh, Blazing Star Barbecue, cool dude, does sauces and rubs. We we're going to be doing some collaboration. Um, it's just cool to find someone else kind of doing the same thing you're doing to bounce off of oh, and nice. learn from, and they can learn from you. And I talked to him for a minute. Yeah, I then went to sleep. Woke up, didn't know where the hell I was going. Woke up, oh, I gotta go to a show. I went to the wrong spot. <laughs> Nicely done. Huh? Nicely done. And then luckily close enough to the right spot and got there and did a show on TikTok. And the whole show was a busy show, was a cool show. So technically that day, I did 19 hours and 54 minutes live on TikTok. And we did some God. shenanigans. I was, yeah, I'm not even going to, we, we even can't talk. If you weren't there, if you weren't on TikTok, you don't even, it was fun. It was. There was a lot of music. There was drinking. There was ninjas. There was this. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was, <laughs> there were glow sticks, but, um, oh, here we go. <laughs> but, uh, we, uh, we did that. And then of course I did. All right. Uh, All right Dean, that's, that was a good one. He walked into that. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone loved it it took a minute to develop but he put it he, he literally summed up your weekend right yeah, yeah. He summed up weekend. <laughs> then of course I had the show but after that I didn't think about it because after I do a long smoke I always take like this crazy just respite because my normal smoke is not a fully 19 hour without stopping live after I've been up all day but it's <laughs> Smoking, drinking, yeah. listening to music. I have this rotating three-hour schedule I sleep on. You know, get the smoker going for the first two hours, go to sleep or take a nap for three, get up, stay up for as long as I need to. If I want, oh, I don't need to, lay back down for, you know. And this time I did that, so I was pretty worn out. So I didn't do anything social media-wise that Saturday night or Friday. And I actually had yeah. some people hit me up on TikTok, and I was like, you okay? Are you all right? I was like, yeah, I just, I'm used to just – kind of de-stressing, de-everythinging from being in the smoke world so I can get yeah. back to, you know, jump normal. And that's anything if, if I do a long, big smoke, which is cool. Every that's, hog I've done, I've done it. Dude, Usually it's a hog smoke. No, uh, completely. It's I mean, it's the same exhaustion I get from the drift events. I mean, yeah. wow. I, I just literally did two weekends in a row of two-day drift events because – in the middle of the first one, we realized that one of our big regional events got canceled at another track, and we decided to put one on and give the drivers there. So I did two weekends in a row away from my family over in Florida. It's an hour and a half away, but I'm up there Saturday morning at 7. Like, you're exhausted. So Sunday night, dude, I'm white. And then Monday, I go to work like a zombie no matter what time I go to bed. Yeah. But we're getting older, man. We're getting older. Um, yeah, you know, you're getting older, man. You can't be doing that. You're getting I older, Web. I don't know what you're hey, talking about, dude. Of, I'm hey, done. Speaking, of, speaking of birthdays, speaking of birthdays, my wife has a birthday tomorrow. Oh, uh, you better not say it. Oh, I'm going to say it. Dude, dude, Web, I don't. Don't you say it. Hold up. There you go. Say what I'm you want to say. I know not to say that. Dude, I am not trying to get stabbed by Sam. I'm not trying to get a letter stab. Ah, dude, no, dude. Oh, I am sorry, Sam. If you ever watch this, um, kids, your dad was a cool guy. 
Uh, uh, I will be happy. I'll be your uncle, Uncle Felix. I'll tell you about how your dad was. I'll tell you about how he died. I'll tell you about why he died. <laughs> it was a random. It was a random accident. Like it was this video, like I saw on TikTok. This lady, they, they do these sad oh, sentimental yeah. videos, and it's like she's sitting there. She goes, "My husband." She goes, "My husband was was hit by a car or something like that." And then she show, she goes, "This is my husband," and he's playing with her kid. He goes. She's like, he's he's he might be hit by something. It was like he got hit by a car, and she goes, "Okay, I didn't do it yet, but he's lying up." Yeah, for. I already died. Well, <laughs> when I put this poison in his place, <laughs> or the ones where it's like, you know, I miss you it has a really super sad song, you know, yeah. and I don't have any love anymore. And he goes like, "That's not what I said. I said we can't go to Chipotle." <laughs> well, you might as well have said no. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, my wife is turning 40 tomorrow. She is embracing it. She loves it. And she's beautiful at it. She's beautiful at it. So, uh, happy birthday, Samantha. It was all him. It was his idea. Not two VRS or subsidiaries. (laughs) (laughs) She's definitely not watching. She is in the rapid You're lucky I don't have your phone number. You're lucky I don't have her phone number. You probably do. (laughs) It ain't changed since we moved from South Dakota. Well, and, and um, bouncing back off of Felix's fucking marathon VRS uh, TikTok, I take there it as a go. personal challenge. I took it as a personal challenge to stay awake as long as he did. And ah. we kind of egged him on, like kept him going, you know, like, hey, play some of this music, play some of this music, you know. We took shifts on TikTok. Um, harassing Felix to keep him awake. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. That's the only reason I was still up that late. And then I forgot to plug my phone in. So the live would have been longer. But when I finally had to lay down, because I had Red Bull, I had in- stay awake pills, I had a five hour energy. And that's about it, I think. And of course, water, beer, and bourbon. But I only drank one Red Bull and didn't do anything else. Um, <laughs> what? Oh, you're big. Hey, I did write up something. Write a yeah. note down real quick. You were talking about your buddy and you know, you guys doing uh basically pigs delivering hot pigs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um in a bigger city. I'm divulging probably the secret thought here, whatever. In a bigger city, not rapid. Or you can try to wrap it in the summer, Sturgis. Uh how about like a pop up pig picking? He ain't even paying attention. He's on TikTok. What? Bro. A pop, it, a pop up. I'm listening. Pig picking. Like you advertise like old punk rock style. And then we probably need to talk about this in private. Like Sturge just comes around. You pop up flyers and be like, hey, be at this spot at two o'clock on Tuesday. And I'm going to have a fresh smoked hog. First come, first serve. Yeah. 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 You do a family style. Oh, yeah. I'm just protecting my ass right now. I'm I'm covering my bases. His wife <laughs> supposedly said not under the rest that it's cool. I'm 40, no big deal. Oh, she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not watching. I texted her. I'm like, he up here telling your business. Uh, I'm trying to protect my ass. Exactly. 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 Next time I see you, I know she's gonna remember that. I'm gonna walk up and be like, hi Sam. She's gonna be like, sure. I'm like, what happened? Two years ago, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> She she well, doesn't like it, no I, I love her for it, you know what I mean I'm, I'm my wife she's crazy like that she's like I'm forty I don't care what you gonna do about it <laughs> nothing you do you yeah. <laughs> you don't know where she, and, she's dangerous. getting back to what you said uh, Webb and like when Felix said he was driving through with the smoker still going bro if I'm in any town and I see a truck pulling a smoker and smoke rolling out of it and smell the aroma I'm following that motherfucker. Hello. Follow me, follow me, follow me. You know, so all you got to do is fire up the smoker, roll around Rapid City there, get the bikers, they'll smell it, they'll follow on their stuff. You're going to have a fucking train of motorcycles behind you until you stop. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. I'm going to be smoking uh, June, first week of June, I believe. I'm going to be smoking with a guy I know. We're going to be smoking a 400 pound (laughs) hog for a biker fest. Yes. I just saw the banner. I just saw the banner on the bottom. 
<laughs> See, he gave me he gave me producer powers. It's probably not oh, a good thing. Shit. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, I'm gonna do oh, wow. I'm gonna do it. all being recorded. Yeah. I'm so, Your Honor, it. um, Exhibit A. It was the, uh, the, defendant, <laughs> the, the dead guy that's in the morgue in the city morgue. Uh, did this and he did that, and th- so the plaintiff had no choice but to exercise her right as a southern woman. So. Here's the thing. He said, thanks and give him hell. <laughs> save, save the night for me, Clark. Yeah, that's my one of my wife's favorite movies. So, you know, Shitter's Full. Um, we actually taught our kids, like when they, like, Eloise still says that she's four. Like when they barely talk, we'd be like, hey, say it with me. Are you serious, Clark? Are you serious, what? Clark? Are you serious? Uh, yeah, if you don't, know the, you don't know the movie, come on. I'm a I had to go Christmas shopping with my mom and I saw a guy with a, a Chicago Blackhawk jersey and on the back it said Griswold. And I started laughing my freaking ass off. My mom's like, what's so funny? I'm like, you yep. know the movie, mom? You know? <laughs> yep. I had, I had to walk up to the guy and go, I love your fucking hockey shirt. He goes, thanks, man. You know? All right, keep on going, guys. I'm just changing chargers. Uh-oh. What's up? No, 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 no. Nothing. Oh, I'm just gotcha. Playing. I'm just playing around with the... Uh... So while you're playing around, guys, I'm going to uh, show you something. Um, he's not a sponsor. This is not a show sponsor, but this is a veteran company I talked about before. Um, get a little... Uh, just like I said, it's not about money. It's about love. And I'm going to share my yeah. screen here. Once I find the right one, nope, not Pornhub. There we go. Nope. Big chicks. I was I was afraid of this one. You did share your screen, and it was just a browser tab. So I was like, I'm not worried. I ain't got no shame in my game. He has a spinner, so this guy, you know, he's baller. You can do your the spinner to try to get some stuff off of putting your email in. But this is a T and K hunting gear. Uh, his oh, famous yeah. phrase, which is not a famous phrase, it's freedom to fuck on. Uh, like I said, I tell Tyler, this guy who runs his company, he's a Marine, former cop uh, in Rapid City, and he's an embodiment, embodiment, ooh, embodiment, embodiment of the core. The embodiment. Embodiment Body. of the Body. core. But yeah. he has really cool hunting gear, um, you know, tactical belts that aren't super tactical. They're actually useful. These uh, EDC everyday carry be- belts. Uh, this is what I love. Everything else he makes, I don't use quite yet, but I definitely use this belt. And it it, it does say it's eighty nine ninety nine, but I guarantee you this will most likely will be the last belt you buy, and you will buy another one because I'm lining up. I have the black one, you know, and because uh, it blends in with m- the majority of the clothing. He has a tan one. My next one is going to be the tan one, the the, the not the uh, one up here at the top. But the more uh, khaki, there we go, the khaki one. Um, literally the most comfortable belt I have uh, worn ever. Like, it's not even like you're wearing a belt. I wear my other belts that I paid way more money for again, and it's like I'm wearing a restraint harness kind of stupid deal. But the cool thing about him, not only he's a Marine, you know, former cop, served overseas, served here in, uh, in America in our own city of Rapid. But he also is uh, all made in America. I mean, like literally goes full length and constraints to go and make sure his shit's made in America to the point where he actually moved in. I think he has like five or six seamstresses. That's what you call them, right? Like the sewing uh, motherfuckers that sew. Yes. Um, <laughs> motherfuckers in, that sew. Yeah, motherfuckers that sew in his shop. You know, <laughs> and unfortunately he doesn't. Oh, there we go. There's this phrase right there. Freedom the fuck on. And I bought a shirt from him with it that's across the back, not on the front. But uh, no, cool guy. And if you're in, uh, you know, he has uh, binos, uh, all kind of just random hunting. Not random, but rangefinder pouches, zip pouches, bow slings. He has beanies, cold weather gear, fleece net gator. There's a new, this is new, the muzzle, the um, rifle muzzle loader shotgun. Uh, 
brace. Is that a book? Is you that know, a book? huh? It's like a yeah, it has the brace on your for your cheek. Oh, oh yeah, the little the little I put that on a bunch of stuff, dude. I need one of those for my three hundred eight right now. Yeah, and right yeah, there, eighty four bucks. That. But I guarantee you, all his I have watched him develop stuff, like develop harness and stuff in his shop. And the kid's good; he knows what he's doing. And uh, hell, I believe in him. You know, so uh, they've been looking for a new belt. You've been talking about him and how that belt was so cool and stuff. That so. belt is amazing. Like yesterday, I didn't wear it because I was shut up. Yesterday, I wasn't wearing it because I just didn't. You know, I was lazy. But today, when I, I got my shit together, I pulled it out of the uh, out of the drawer and put it on my pants and hooked it up and did it. And it's a little bit different because there is a la- uh, a part that goes back over the belt to Velcro. And as long as you yeah. get it under your eyelets, you know, um, when I am a little bit pudgy, the last <laughs> end will not make it. But once it once you uh, you know do you're supposed to do with your diet, and it is where it's supposed to be, it stays perfectly fine. And I've used it. I've carried it. I've put my my three point eight on there with two mags, and literally, it's just like they're on my pants. You know. Yes, Dean. You don't have sure. a thirty two inch waist, Dean. I think you can buy multiple belts and link them together like a train, <laughs> like a train, and hook them up. Maybe if you get off that sweet baby raise and start drink eating some beer barbecue, you lose some oh. weight. But if you beer barbecue, you might not lose weight because you want to cook more. Yep. <laughs> Sweet baby no, has all that excess high fructose corn and stuff in it. Wait a minute, wait but anyway, wait a so no, I uh, like the belts. I'm about to look at those belts. I from from obviously aircraft maintenance. You don't wear that metal buckle belt. You get one with plastic because otherwise you're stupid. Yes. yes. Yeah. I've seen a couple dudes like on the B one. Well, the cool thing like, is that's an aluminum. It's an aluminum belt, though. It's an aluminum buckle, and that buckle was made in America. Like all the parts of that belt are made in America. Nothing's uh, dude, made from China. Oh no, no, I, I dig the. I dig that. He needs a plastic buckle, though. On, well, on yeah, I was, you know, I'll Not talk to him. But you know, I, I also think. Yeah, he probably does. Okay, get wait, 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 wait a minute, Web. Well, I got to tell you something. If you're somewhere that an aluminum belt buckle. Is gonna harm you, uh, cause you harm. You're probably where you don't need to be. Well, well no, it's not that uh, for aircraft maintenance. Aircraft yeah. maintenance, you don't want anything that can scratch the plane. Yeah, so if you got to lean up against the fuselage or wing or something to get leverage or anything like that, you don't have a lean, metal lean, edge. Lean, lean up against the windscreen. Yeah. They don't want you cutting it with your belt buckle. Yeah, yeah, that's my only thing. Like I've got. I wore uh, uh, a plastic buckle because I bought it myself in the Air Force, and then I literally just went right back out and found a random like five eleven, same weave and everything like that. It's reversible black yeah. or tan. So sometimes no, even I'll, in aircraft I'll, maintenance, uh, we would take it if you had a metal buckle. You would get duct tape, and you would if you were working on a jet on your belly, you would get duct tape and wrap your buckle yep. around wow. because on the on. Well, definitely on the planes I've worked, especially the planes I've worked, you ain't you ain't scratching shit or you're done. But yeah, windscreen is the window, the window of the plane. Definitely. I know about bod. I know about foreign objects and debris. I um, I was actually, I was stationed in a helicopter unit when I was in Korea the second Dean, time. Dean, or sorry, uh, Sai. D- Dean means fucking other dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know anything. We're trying to keep PG and talk about better and stuff, and Felix just like, oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> hold the pin, hold the pin. You know, we're just having a good flow here, and Felix just interjects all kinds of craziness. Nothing, anything wrong with any of it, but it's just like, all right, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, we're gonna have to mute Felix. <laughs> Hey, you got producer power now. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, he can. He's like, he's probably got I'm a few who knows, <laughs> ranked up on the uh, stream yard than me. But hey, man, take it over. No, this I, is your baby. With helicopters, <laughs> you're just blowing the fun out, bro. She's your queen to be. We know what foreign object damage is. It's actually called foe because if it's sitting on the ground, why am I picking it up? Let it do its job. <laughs> 
I said it to a chief once. He didn't really feel that was amusing because it was cold outside. And I'm like, why are we picking up foe? He goes, it's fod. I'm like, well, if it's fod, let it do its job. I'm like, <laughs> I had a chief. We were on, he we were on a fod walk in Vegas at Red Flag with B1s. Love the chief Dude, to death. The we're dumbest fod walk I've throws, ever been on. He throws so, his freaking cigar down and just oh, walks off. Really? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we it's a walk. <laughs> yeah, we were in a, a undisclosed location that had a lot of sand in it. Southwest, and Asia. they called us to do a fog walk. Which okay, cool. We'll do a fog walk in the beginning. Walk the line, and we get to the end of the flight, in, end of the main parking area. We're doing the fog walk, and they're like, "All right, cool, everyone, let's go to the flight line." Like to the flight line, and I was like, "Uh, okay." And so we get on the flight line, and. It web web can attest. It's not like the flight line is just like right there. The flight line is like over there. So we <laughs> walked the parking area. We walked the transition area. We walked the taxi area. We walked the flight line. And I'm like, okay, cool. Is this far walk over? We're at the end of the flight line. They're like, keep walking. I'm like, looking out at open desert. I'm like, like you want us to go like out there? <laughs> They're like, yeah. I'm like, Sai, what's up? <laughs> you guys up? were lucky. I got when we'd go to NTC and play, you know, GI Joe out in the sand at Fort Irwin. We would, um, after we do the uh, miles, the miles gear laser tag with blanks, mm -hmm. we would then have to do hands across Fort Irwin and pick up all of spent brass. Yeah, dude. I remember flying over in a KC-135 on an incentive flight over F Fort Irwin. But back what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love this part. So back what I was saying when I was talking. I'm just saying. Well, hey, hey, I was I'm done. Not gonna, I don't wanna, I don't, we're not going to over talk each other like the sauce boss over here. I'm pretty much sure <laughs> we're going to talk to everybody. But anyway, I'm just saying. What WP up in here? We, we and then we ain't talking about what ass pussy anyway. <laughs> what ass pussy? <laughs> right, From the top, make it drop. What's up? <laughs> oh, I need to make a parody. Someone learn. Someone, someone that can make parody videos. Call me. I have parodies in my head. I don't know how to do them. But anyway, uh, so we get to the end of the flight line, and they're seriously. I look at them. I'm like. We're going out there. They're like, yeah. I'm like, uh, okay. We're gonna do fog walk in sand. I'm like, the planes don't even. So we walk. Uh, yeah. We walk, and we walk. We walk far enough to where the base flight tower looks like a mirage. Because <laughs> I kept looking back every couple minutes, like just to make sure I'm going in the right direction. <laughs> like I'm here. At least I was smart. I had a camelback under my top with an ice because I used to go get my camelback frozen every night at uh, services, and I would bring it back and have the bladder frozen and have and slide my hundred ounce bladder in my deal and put it under my t shirt. So I'm walking out there with a nice frozen camelback on my back, and I'm walking through and I'm just like looking at. I found a goat, a goat skeleton. I found we found a house You're in the middle of the desert. Out. That no, that had the perfect square. It was one acre, one or two acres of a square of grass, perfectly green, with a house. Like it came from Kansas in the middle of and a driveway that went just that way. And we we're like, <laughs> uh, no walls. Just I was we were like, okay. We walked past that and we finally like an hour later, come back to the flight line. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? Like, this is some dumb shit. Like, just walk out into the desert, walk back. So we get back. And come to find game? out. All I can say. We were huh? talking about, you remember, do huh? you remember the game we were talking about at the beginning of the show? Minesweeper? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we weren't minesweepers. <laughs> what happened was. We were what involuntary was, minesweepers. We, we were we were my people. What happened was uh, after I found out because I came back because of my job, you know, you get to talk to people that know shit. And this yeah. guy's just in there bullshitting about a certain part on the airplane fell off. 
and Dumb. was I will tell you this, Webb. You'll know what I'm talking about. A Man. certain part of the plane fell off that was supposed to stay attached. <laughs> and oh no, it's not supposed to stay attached. It was supposed to when it got when it get disattached, when it got let go, it's supposed to fly off and be gone. Well, it uh, didn't detach. It stayed on the plane, and they think it hit the ground somewhere. And we were walking the flight path from a, a certain area to the base, and we were looking God. for this said object. And I was like, they could have told us that. Like, <laughs> we're all everyone. Everyone that was on this fall walk had the appropriate <laughs> clearance level. Yeah, to yeah, go yeah. find this part. Because I mean, dudes probably would have kicked it like a can because it looks like a piece of junk, especially after it duffed the ground at whatever mile per hour. But they didn't say nothing, and it was so funny. I was just like, "You freaking dumbasses!" I I, like, kicked, I kicked part of the core of an F thirty five engine like a can the first time I saw it because we were doing <laughs> exactly that. We were doing a full line with the whole wing across. The flight line because this it's you can look it up it's nothing secret it's uh 35 popped an engine on the runway at eglin one day and shot like whatever stage fan blades out and like i literally kicked the thing like again <laughs> like i was like dude dude i was looking down like you're supposed to in a fog walk just doo, doo, yeah doo, click. oh my bad <laughs> Oh, they gave us all these little flags i'm like oh yeah that was right there that's cool <laughs> <laughs> I was in Kuwait, um, and we had the bulldozers and moving sand over there and all the spillage that comes out on the side of the bull blades, right? And one time this box of uh, Russian fucking landmines came out in the spoilage off of the side of the blade. So the dozer operator shuts it down immediately, you know. We call up EOD. EOD's like, you guys are combat engineers. Why are you calling us? Blow it in place. <laughs> and so we all, we all start looking at each other and we're like, Yes, we get to blow something up. Great, you know. <laughs> Exercise. Yeah. We may or may not have used more C4 than we should have, you know. It's fine. It's fine. It'll be okay. Dean, like, oh, how did this dude get an arm stuck under an injection seat? Um, well, I may not see that happen, but. Come on, give us an explanation for that. Well, Sorry, I was uh, handling TikTok important business. No, the, the, the second time I went to Korea, I'm a um, heavy equipment mechanic by Army standards, right? You know, dozers, graders, bucket loaders, blah, blah, blah. They stuck me in an aviation support. Holy crap. Yeah, I'm like, you guys realize I work on diesels and turbos and like, you know, earth moving equipment, not helicopters. And they're like, yeah, no, you're going into the unit. We need an NCO. And I'm like, all right, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, you you know, the, you're the management is where you were. They needed somebody in charge that wasn't that knew how to throw a wrench, basically. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> basically, what I spent the whole year doing was traveling um, over South Korea and picking up equipment um, from desk chairs to five tons to yep. make a new unit. You know, and it was like, oh. We're gonna transfer this here. Transfer this here. I'll drive it back, you know. But it was a it was a charity drive, is what it was. It was a charity basically. drive. You're yeah, yeah. You're drawing a bunch of assets, unused assets from other bases to set up another one. Yeah, that's basically what I did. But yeah, it was fun. It was like because um, every time the, the chopper pilots got to do X amount of hours, you guys know that to keep their flight stuff up, right? Mm. And so. They were always flying, and so it was always easy to find a pilot and be like, hey, are you going to Camp Casey? Yeah. Can I hit your ride? And, you know, so you come chopper and then to Camp Casey, do your business, chopper back. It's way better than a bus. Way yeah, better than a bus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did that a decent amount in Turkey, um, doing inspections and random incentive flights. We helped the chopper squadron out there a pretty good bit, but uh, went to a couple other places. Yeah, Dean had a jet crash in the Olympics, and five years later, some dude called and said he found parts. Oh, bummer. Jamming, uh, jamming pot on the prowler. Wow, yeah. No telling where that go. And then, oh, the guy that got stuck under the ejection seat. He was looking for FOD. Pilot took a bag of Jolly Ranchers up there. So he literally just got stuck. Well, they do oil them up like a pig in a fence, just snatch them out. I dropped a. Uh... 
I dropped a screw doing a job inside of the cockpit of the V1. And oh, it's God. super, it's super like, oh my God, we got to find the FOD. So I get a bore scope. I go to NDI, get a bore scope. I slide it behind the freaking instrument panel. And as I'm going down each level, I'm like, washer, screw, You're a pencil, everything. a pen, there's a rubber band. <laughs> I'm going, I'm really going down past, I'm recording this as I go past all this stuff and I find, because I know what screw I used, I find my screw and I get the little, tw- the, 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 gr- the grabbers and I grab my screw bloop, and I take my screw out <laughs> and I finish my job and I turn it in and they're like, how come you didn't grab the other stuff? I'm like, really? Like, really? Uh, You want me like, okay, cool. I would have grabbed all that stuff, but guess what? It's been there. Like it's, it's been in there. Like, Excellent. why didn't the people adopt it? Grab it. I got, What's up? I got, I did the same exact thing, basically. I was working on an instrument panel, and something that my idiot airman had set on the side went down into that cavity somehow on the side of the B1 cockpit on the left side. And I, we did the same thing. I boroscoped my screw out. We put we installed everything just fine. And then we went down and we picked up a couple pieces of FOD down there. I got FOD farther a month, and and uh, got a day off, so it was simple. <laughs> now you guys, you guys in the Air Force take that FOD thing a little too seriously. No, uh, whoa, 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 whoa! I have yeah. seen and witnessed. Go ahead. Witnessed a uh, as a pilot in combat on a fighter, and he did his thing. Like nothing happened. He did his job under danger fire close all that stuff bugging out getting shot at and when he got back the aircraft did it did its do did its thing and it went through the normal egress like normal normal inspections and egress pulled the seat did their inspection there was on this guy's seat so to initiate some of the actuators and debt cord on ejection seats there's a like a firecracker right and it hit the pin which starts all the thing. Well, yeah. literally, the way this was set, there was an eraser, a pencil eraser from a mechanical pencil in the spot where the injector is supposed to shoot out. And so they they caught they cataloged it. It was a bad deal. They were like, holy shit, blah, blah, blah. Where, where has this seat been? And they figured this seat did like four combat missions. So if this pilot would have been, ooh, my voice crack. <laughs> oh, I totally Sorry, get guys, I, I, I understand. <laughs> the um, if this guy would have initiated and they proved it because since they found it, they tested it. What would have happened if that thing was there? They want they eject, you know, not ejected the seat, but they because those are egress guys. They can stop that at any point. Right. They launched it and that eraser was dense enough to push like to give enough force for the initiating pin to hit it and absorb it and not let the charge go off. So that pilot would have tried to eject and been the web stop or is he dancing? I'll say oh, he's dancing and I'll wait till he quits dancing. I, but, I uh, totally understand what you're saying about that. Oh, but he like- stopped too, Dave. Am I in one paused? I'm I'm here. Hi, Dave. Uh, dude, I think my internet's doing that stupid thing real quick. Like it Hi, does Dave. every damn show where I'm good. You guys are going to bounce out and uh, you'll be back here in a minute. Dave, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Felix, we can hear you. I can see you. All hear right. Dave. Well, and that's the importance of like FOD in a cockpit. But, um, I get the importance of it and preventing it, but I've also worked with um, our former enemies in uh, other countries. And I talked to a pilot and a, a crew chief because Russia's way different. Pilots actually work on their planes, faction that. Yeah. And maintenance is way different. It's kind of a class system. But anyway, I remember asking this kid, I'm like, so what do you guys do for fod removal? And he goes, well, we tell the, pl- we tell the pilot, hey, we dropped some shit. And he goes up to altitude and flips that bitch over and shakes it. <laughs> and as he's up the altitude upside down, 
he pulls all the stuff off the off the cop head screen <laughs> and puts it in a baggie and puts it in his pocket and then turns the plane back upright and then comes down and lands. I'm like, that sounds so much easier. <laughs> But well, well, you have to do an direction because you have things that stick inside a seat. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, there was a, I actually had a story like that from one of my other buddies that worked in the F-16 unit. He said that literally the uh, they had a fought incident. The commanding officer, uh, the Wing King, basically told them, we're well, going through every jet with a fine tooth comb, you know, all fought things. We're going to pull back up and blah, blah, blah. And we're going to pull panels, we're going to inspect, and all this stuff. And at the end of their little surge of that, he went up in his, like, his squadron jet, you know, whatever tail number it was, and did the same exact thing. Went up, went inverted, shook it around a little bit, and watched all this stuff (laughs) fall (laughs) into the canopy, inverted, (laughs) and picked it up. He landed, got out. Handed the bag to his crew chief and said, "Yeah, we're doing this for another two days." So, well, and I, okay, I, I totally get that. As far as like, yeah, you're flying, you want to make sure there's no silliness going on. But like for me in the military, um, like for example, a M88, the tow truck for the tanks, the big big rig. Yeah, um, we would pull fucking weeds out of the engine bay of that thing. Literally, yeah. there was dirt and weeds, like you know, eight inches tall, growing in the engine bay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I mean, that's, you, you don't have the danger of falling ten thousand feet at any minute. You know what I mean? It, exactly. So you know, when I, when when I said you guys in the Air Force take the you know FOD thing a little overboard, I guess you know I gotta you know yeah, I understand why you're that anal about it, but you know, well, that's like Navy, that's Navy, that's anal. <laughs> I'm a little bit even I'm working commercial airliners now and that's the the hugest thing now of course a military aircraft is armed with millions of dollars in munitions and you know a life on military board. aircraft is also cheaper <laughs> technically yeah but, but if you have you know a hundred plus lives on board the yeah that's the huge huge ordeal you know, you know, I want somebody like you working on the stuff that I'm 10,000 plus feet in the air with. Okay. I, I you know, I have somebody control. Sure. It should happen. Yeah, if I, dude, I see some of these people that I work with. Mo- 99% of them are amazing at their job and they do, they're awesome at it. And they fought, they, you know, we figure out stuff together. There's that small little one or maybe half percent that they'll come in there for, for just a job and they don't realize it's aerospace and it's a skilled trade and they'll come in there and be like, Hey, and somebody asks them, Hey, why'd you do it like that? Well, eh, that that's, that'll do. There we go. I'm back. Immediately. They're like, no, that's not how we just do something. Did you do it by the book or not? So thankfully people like that in my company, at least I've seen, get weeded out pretty easily so um, well, yeah. even when i was in the military people were like why do you take your job so seriously and i'm like because somebody <laughs> might be trying to get in this humvee or this five ton or this dozer and unask a bad situation and i don't want on my conscience you know something i did led to them not being able to unask the situation you know, absolutely. absolutely. All right. I want to derail the convo, but we are at the top of the hour and we will do a awesome. sponsorship sponsorship shot toast <laughs> toast to you guys. The folks, the three folks that I can see that are still following us on. Yeah. We had like you know? 16 at one point, but hey, hey it's all good. You know, it ebbs and flows and the people that watch, watch, we're here for when you need us. If you don't need us, we won't be here. No, we still will be here. Yeah. When you yeah, do it, when you don't, we'll be here. here. And cheers to you. Done. As the fans, people on VRS, doing your due, the folks that follow us, the folks that keep us entertained, and the folks that keep us doing this. Uh, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry I'm not as good as the Irishman on toast, but you know what? It's all good. I'm good where it counts. Cheers. It's from the heart. It's from the heart. Maybe the penis. See, <laughs> well, there we go. There we go. Like I said, uh, top of the hour, and we are going to talk about uh, one of our sponsors. All 
Uh, like I said, folks, that is Beer BQ, leading the barbecue social revolution one backyard at a time. Uh, if you don't know, you know. If you follow me on TikTok, just join, download the app, do it. I got Uncle Cy in this. Uh, we have Beer BQ tag. We have a lot of cool things that are more interactive than Facebook can ever hope to be. You know, we got beer tag. We got my weekly Friday giveaway. We already have given away two things of barbecue sauce. So the same household. Uh, you'll figure it out if you join the group and understand why the craziness is funny while Uncle Cy is laughing. But uh, I do a every Friday giveaway. And all you got to do is get on my live on TikTok and comment, be a part of the conversation, have fun. I write your name down. I put it in a really decorative barbecue box. We shake it up. Every Friday we pull it out. And guess what? That person gets barbecue sauce sent to them. No charge. Um, it, it's kind of fun. It's kind of what we do. Uh, we have a lot of things coming out. You know, we're still working on our coffee sauce, coffee rub, uh, doing what we do. I'm guessing someone said something funny. I'm breaking what? I'm breaking disco. What the hell? Listen to y'all. Okay, Jada. Oh, shit. Calm down. Calm down. Put your panties back on. Disco Cheeto. Put your like back on. But uh, guys, we still have uh, all the promo codes that are uh, accessible to all, but all everybody. Uh, like BBQ's Vet for Life. That's V E T for Life for all veterans out there. And those boxes, actually, those boxes are all sold out. Those are the last boxes, and I had confirmed it. We only had about a hundred boxes made. So if you have one of those BBQ sauce gift boxes, you have one of a hundred. I don't know the number, but that's what you got. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, oh, sweet baby, god darn Dean, you got me off my freaking game. But uh, we still have our subscription, program, our, our subscription program running, so our sauce of the month is going you know, one dollar, 10 bucks to 40 bucks, get one to four jars or sauce rub combo, mix and match it up. Uh, they're the cheapest way you ever get sauce to your house, and you don't have to remember. You don't have to be like, oh, I forgot. I was going to do that. I didn't remember. It comes out once a month. You get it shipped once a month. Matter of fact, I got a couple of shipments coming uh, after Christmas to uh, some select people that have pointed up and are doing it or doing a damn thing. So thank you all for supporting BBQ Sauce. Uh, you guys are keeping the lights on. And hopefully one day I'll keep the lights on for you guys. And, uh, you know, I said we're pushing hard, doing what we do. And that's all we can do. And uh, thank you. Other than that. Back on to the show. What do you got, so Dave? Uh, yeah, I got nothing other than uh, my Steelers are playing like total crap. Not to steal from Sports Church or nothing, but oh, damn. that was that was the hardest hitting game. I love the video memes they did of Juju Schuster of him dancing in the beginning of the, uh, the game and then dancing in warm up and then getting that hit that got put on him. Like that Juju one. got. I didn't, Juju see that. Got, I didn't see that. He was dancing over the emblem too, like this. Yeah, he was dancing over the emblem, and he's and they the hit him appropriately. And then he got just his bell rung. I'm a Steelers he, fan, dude, and he I got saw that. <laughs> I saw that hit. Yeah, okay, it's the Breaking AFC. The you know, it's a physical, hard hitting league. I mean, you got the Ravens, you got the Steelers. You know, and. It was a physical game, but, you know, when the ball hits the palm of your hand, you have to at least catch it. Very true. Here, just a throwback. Oh, not, not the, the anal. You know, this right here. They had a mag light that logged four and a half hours of flight time in the turtle shell. I will. Hold up, guys. Tell you. I got to make this phone call real quick. Yeah, go ahead. This go guy ahead. just called me a Marine. How dare him? Uh, <laughs> call him up. Correct him. You're an airman. Airwoman. Hold up. Hold it. Holding. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Is this Brian? It is. I need to ask you a couple questions, Brian, before we continue this conversation, okay? <laughs> You're live online. You're with the sauce boss. You're in a safe. You're in a safe area, Marine. All right, you good? All right. Who the hell are you calling Marine? I am an airman. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a show called the Bar or called uh, Scramjet right now with a bunch of other veterans. And we're talking shit, and you you send me that text, and I'm like, this motherfucker called me a Marine. 
<laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Hell. You listen. Well, he's listening to a fucking dick redneck Johnny. <laughs> no, no, sir. I am an air, I'm an Air Force vet who is very affiliated to Marine Corps. I went to school with the Marines. I deployed with Marines, and pretty much a lot of my damn friends are Marine Corps. So, but you know what's cool? Now that I know you, Marine, I have a surprise for you when I send you your uh, sauce order back. <laughs> Ooh. No, it's a good thing. It's funny. It's best. It's what we this do. Is, this is sixty four. You know, it's not IED. You're good. Like it's Air Force. You know, you know, you might get like a koozie chair or something. That's what we do. It's what I got. <laughs> you 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 de- developed up. A- oh, dude. You know, it's what it is. But brother, you know, anytime you get anything from me that's damaged, just automatically take pictures of it. I am sorry. I will get you your order. You're not paying for it, even if even if it's not your fault. It's the post office fault. And I know you didn't take pictures, but you're still – I'm going to send your order back to you um, just because I don't have your name in the phone right now. Um, just send me a text with your information, your address, and I'll send that back to you. No charge to you. You don't have to buy more sauce. The post office fucked up, and uh, I'll make it right, all right? No, I, I know they fucked up, and uh... – I actually want to get That's some of that mustard sauce. I'm gonna order some and just throw that jar in with it. All right, I will do that, sir. And let me know what jar got broke in the email or in the text, and I'll make that happen. Okay. Thanks for being a good sport. All right, you have a good night. All right, um, right bye. Um, customer service at the finest. I can back Dude, that up. That was maybe Wait, funny because he goes, I thought he told me you're a Marine. I'm like, how dare you? My ASVAB scores, I would have been a general in the Marines, at least at three stars. <laughs> well, and to, um, to like piggyback on the customer service, um, before Felix was the internet fabulous, famous guy he is, I, um, I, <laughs> I, I ordered a sample and the post office fucked it up and cracked one of the bottles. And I hit him up, and I'm like, dude, the post office fucked me. I, uh, out of the two bottles, one got broke. He sent me, like, literally less than two days later, I got a replacement for it. So, you know, customer service above and beyond. Hey, man, that's that's the thing. First of all, my philosophy is the customer is always right, and the customer has to do the least effort to get your product. And then when once they order your product, you need to do the max effort to make sure they're happy. So my first thing is, and if you read the disclaimer, in, and no one reads the disclaimer, but we still have it there because it's legal. It yep. says, take pictures of box if, com- if, if the box comes in damaged. The first thing you do before you open it, take pictures of the outside of the box. And the post office used to do really good at, like, we, we send in pictures, we put the claim in, and they pay us. The last two claims, we had video proof of the postal worker throwing the box on the ground. They haven't paid it. But the thing is, I've had a buddy who I send a whole case of a court when we make courts to. He waited like four months to open it up. I'm like, why, why would you wait? He opened <laughs> it up. He had like three courts out of six broken in the middle. And because I, you know, was new to packing that much. And he never freaking bubbles go on the ends outside. <laughs> Dean, I, why can't I click on Dean's thing? What's going on? Can you see that? Nothing's working on my computer. Yeah, I saw that. Bubbles go on the inside. I think I'm back. No, they go on the outside, Dean. Anyway, bubble wrap. <laughs> But anyway, so I make it paramount that someone calls me. You can't just call me like I broke my shit like he did, but I get it. I'm not, I don't know. He never sent me a picture, but he's not going to, he's not going to incur not getting his product. So I'm going to send it as soon as possible. Like I'm out of rub and I had to go. I'm immediately like, mm, I got to get off on a website because I don't like having shit sitting. I want yeah. enough product. And that's why this whole funding package for my company, and it's, sorry to talk about my shit again, but that's why it's so apt for me because I want to be to the point where I have enough product that anytime a wholesaler calls me, I can give them product. Anytime a customer calls me, I can give them product because why am I even fucking here? It's to give you product. I'm not here to give you an excuse for why you can't have product. 
or excuse why the product you ordered is delayed. My job, if I'm doing it right, is to get you your product that you paid your hard-earned money for in a timely manner. Point blank. Bar none. Not the sauce boss. Not any of that bullshit. It is getting you what you ordered quick as possible. And if it's, fu- it's fucked up, getting it back to you as fast as possible. Well, and then we freaking the ass of the person that's doing it. That's why when I b- redo my business plan from manufacturing to distribution, I want to build a building to hire vets so we can have a badass distribution network. It's a, you know superior boxing and everything else and just do it all. And then we we send like giant cases on a pallet to the post office and like just just try to pass up the postal worker kind of uh-huh. to a point. Let them touch it as least as possible. <laughs> yes, as little as possible. Yes. <laughs> Gene Kern, you know I can ship them, and I will also send you an invoice for your sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send them carrier pigeon, untrained, like the Navy. Cash on delivery. Man, my internet. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Well, can um, you take that down? I can't. My shit's being weird. It's down. There's All no. Right. There's no comment up. I have a you lag. Should, you should actually send Dean some stuff by Amtrak because you can still ship by Amtrak. You can, or Pony Express, whatever they used back when he was born. <laughs> or gray, and gray, Greyhound. You should buy Greyhound. I can tie it to a dog and let it run out and be like, go find Dean. <laughs> <laughs> away, Lassie, away. <laughs> oh, hey, Frodo, man. Frodo, Frodo lady. What? Oh. Two layers of bubble wrap and bubbles inside. Absolutely. Man, so, uh,. Hi. The guy that I called just messaged me on TikTok and he was like, fucking dude, he goes, damn chair force got me calling them Marines. He goes, thanks for taking and he says, Thanks for taking care of me. You know what? Technically, isn't that technically how it works? If another Marine calls you a Marine, you're Marine. Dude. No. Not at I'm all. A, I'm a Marine. I'm a Marine. I'm a Marine. I'm dude. I'm a Marine. Hold up. Yes. Someone, I need a crayon. I need some crayons. I gotta see <laughs> Marine. You're a space Marine. I need some crayons. I ain't saying I'm a combat marine. I'm just a marine. Like I don't care well, if I'm mad. I'm, I'm, I'm in the core. If the, Bro, if the guard, guardians got renamed to airmen and like Air Force was like Space Marines, Space Marines, <laughs> Space Marines. Yeah, Starship Troopers or whatever. Starship Troopers, baby. Bro, you should I'm totally. Gonna, gonna, I have some crayons upstairs, so I'll let you guys know how the test goes. Because Marine call me Marine, so if a Marine calls me Marine, I'm just saying. I'm just. Saying. Not, you should totally make up special labels that when veterans order and you know they're a Marine, you could put like red crayon flavor sauce or yellow flavor crayon sauce. Dave, uh, I have crayons. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, exactly. What do you send Navy guys? Uh, I have a... <laughs> um, <laughs> it looks about like this. About the same shape and size and color, but it has a rounded end. That's why I put in the Navy guys. And it, it, it plugs in too. It's Bluetooth, environmentally oh. friendly, oh, rechargeable okay. batteries. Oh, okay. Cool. And it usually kind of vibrates like this. Dean got one in the mail. He knows. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. At least we're smart enough to make them, you know, solid. <laughs> you know what I just realized about the Navy symbol, the anchor? If you kind of look at it funny, it looks like a cack and balls. <laughs> oh, don't go, Dave Winter. <laughs> Dave Winter. A, ca- a cat card? From the halls of Montezuma uh, to Dave's uh, Uranus. <laughs> Uncle Sad again. <laughs> I love the Navy. So I figured out why my internet is being weird. It's our went high winds. Yeah, I bet. Causing, causing the interwebs to be Small dumb. 
Yeah, you got small misalignments in your in your satellite or your uh, radio towers. They're messing with stuff. Yeah, I'm I heard sure. you guys was getting some wind out there in South Dakota. Dakota. <laughs> South Dakota, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, like sixty knot winds. Like uh, for some reason, I'm still I still like the Ellsworth Air Force Base. Air Force Base, like, Facebook page. Oh, not some reason. I, I still love the area, and I plan to come out there and visit you, Felix, pretty soon. Hopefully. Um, but, yeah, they were saying 60 knot winds, you know, crazy temps and it's cold temps, you know. So, tie down I'm your back. furniture. I'm back. Am I here? You're here? Yeah. All right, cool. Here. You're snug in your basement, though, so. So, I think I found my next, next mask to wear when I have to go out and people. Uh oh. I mean, robbing a bank heat style. I'm good with that. <laughs> it, covers my, it covers my nose and my mouth like they say it's supposed to. You know, all it's got to do. Very true. We're basically in Halloween for a whole year. Oh, yeah, we've been there. For yeah, sure. and whoever's the new El Presidente is whatever. Whatever. So, uh, you almost oh, came into that. Dave, didn't you have something you want to talk about? Um, yeah, kind of weird. Um, and it's not to be a Debbie Downer. Um, somebody Hold that's from South Africa. <laughs> what? Holy shit. Um, South Africa, Mazen Bazel. Yeah. Oh, wow. American wow. Amazon Brazil. Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Holy crap, Felix, you're famous. I don't know. No, it ain't me, dog. This is Scramjet. I don't know Portuguese, but hola. Portuguese. <laughs> Squeezy. Easy. <laughs> Bees easy. I have, I have no clue. Isn't it, worth it in an easy? Isn't it how you say Portuguese? Daniel Silva, I've always wanted to go to Carnival down there in Rio. And you know what? His last name is Silva. I'm not going to talk shit. He could probably kick my ass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody yeah. with the last name of Silva, I kind of, I'm leery <laughs> of. I'm like, my bad, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, I know that's my wife, but you know what? She likes to go dancing. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, I'm just trying to save us on dental bills. I want to get my teeth kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh. Yeah, we see it, brother. Uh, say it louder. He just said it ex exclamation points. Hola. Is that the same message? No? It's, no it's, not, it's not the same message. Oh, yeah. My shit's kind of whack right now. No, love love to visit Brazil. That would be amazing. Almost got the chance to go to Honduras. Air Force was a wussy, though, and backed out. So. <laughs> Whatever. Dave, go ahead with your uh, yeah, yeah. That. Um, not to be Debbie Downer or no junk like that or anything. Um, a veteran that I've been um, Facebook friends with for probably the last eight years from another two-name veteran group that started out good and went sideways. Anyway, um, she uh, passed away. Heart, massive heart attack. You know, and um, I, I saw the outpouring of people that knew her from Facebook and never actually met her. And it made yeah. me kind of start to think like what this all is, you know? And it's like, I, 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 you know, I've actually met Felix. We went to dinner, um, talking to you, Web, you know, get to know you, he me and you. Did talk buy me a drink and he tried, but I didn't, I didn't relent. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you had your wife there. That's the only reason you didn't submit, Felix. Uh, but yeah. I call it, that the cameraman, but anyway. It, it kind of got <laughs> the cameraman. It kind of got me thinking like, you know, this that's what the interwebs is supposed to be used for. When somebody reaches out or how you get connected with people, you know, and and you know, you can make bonds on the interwebs, you know. You know, don't let people oh, tell you. Oh, you know, we're doing that right now. Yeah, exactly. If it wouldn't been for the interweb, I'd have never met you. I'd have never met Felix. You know, you I'd know, like I want to go back in time and shoot the guy who made the internet, like Al Gore. I'm. Just <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Simpsons did it. Like, God dang it. Simpsons you see did who it. You got me hanging out with? The Simpsons did it. The Simpsons did it. The Simpsons did it. You got to go back and kill Al Gore. Because he invented the internet, which uh, when I was in college, we had the undernet. If you remember, anybody remember that? Because everyone had to le learn the code. You know, like everyone thinks a dig yeah. is learning the code nowadays. Learn the code is not a dig. We used to code back in the day because we had this thing called the undernet, which is like texting without all the prettiness. It was literally based. You had to do like backslash, backslash, colon, and then you would type in a, a greater or less than symbol in the greater, you know, blah, 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 greater than slash. Oh, wow. Whoa, what happened? Stop. I, what? I, do I, not I, make I, me strip you of I, your many powers. <laughs> what happens when you give you give demigods a, a fucking a key to the throne and let them touch the drill there? You gave me the email address already. We're good. <laughs> you know, I gotta change the fucking password. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you gave fear. me the keys. The speedometer says a hundred mile an hour. He wants to see what a hundred mile an hour feels like. I'm gonna He's use like, dude, we thing. gotta get to a hundred mile an hour. You don't know how to navigate. Dude, I got it. Even you weren't even paying attention to the ticker earlier, so like I and all kinds of stuff. So, but uh, anyway, no, I forgot what I was talking about. But uh, someone redirect me, please. Redirection, squirrel. Redirection. Oh yeah, squirrels everywhere. Squirrels and chipmunks and gophers. Yeah, I'm redirecting. Is that what was that working? <laughs> What what's up with your arm? Why are you paused? Are you pop locking? Oh no, I'm good. Oh, <laughs> just like your arm was I like. A, there's a toolbox over here. Man, I'm just oh, you just gotta touch it. You gotta touch I'm just it. Propping. I'm just propping. You're just propping. You're just propping. Trying to trying to high side. Ah. Like what's up? How you doing? I got a wall over here. I got a wall. Hey, I'm on baby. a wall. I got a hold. On. I got a wall. I got a wall over here. <laughs> Hey baby, did you hear that they might be coming out with a Beetlejuice two? Tim, they Burton. are coming out with Beetlejuice two, and they're coming well, out with a. Uh, uh, Tim Burton was talking to Johnny Depp about a Beetlejuice. Because Johnny Depp needs money because of whoever he was dating yeah. that raped him. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we, they're coming out with a um, coming to America two also. Oh, I saw that coming to America two. Yeah. Yes. Like, James Earl Jones back all my childhood. Dude. So my wife, obviously, turning 40. She doesn't care. I confirmed it with her. Yes, I, yes, I yes. Like, yes. I was like, did yes, Felix yes. really text you? She's like, yes, he did. <laughs> said, Webb's talking about your birthday. Said, Webb's talking about your birthday. <laughs> Are you okay with it? She's like, yeah, I'm 40. Who cares? So there we go. There we go. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I right. said that. I said that earlier. Maybe you should get a better I, grinder. You grind up that freaking lawn trimming you're smoking. No, no. She she loves it. She don't care. I just had to confirm. I had to confirm. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, we were talking about, yeah, hey, man, her. I just know I know Southern women and they remember shit. And I ain't trying to be like, how you doing? Have a good weekend. Smack, smack. And I'm like, I'm sorry. No. 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 She's just I know. Sick. It's after you, bro. She's just sick Ellie on you. <laughs> She'll own your business for the end of the day. She'll sweet talk you out of it and be like, so you just sign here. Be like, okay, sweetie. Okay, so I'm going, can I have another piece of cake? <laughs> <laughs> In a heartbeat, dude. Oh. Well, God, be like, what'd you do? Well, who are you? I'm the sauce. Oh, I, I just got a letter saying, a text saying, I can't say I'm the sauce boss no more. <laughs> <laughs> Because I illegally, it was a hostile takeover. He didn't a hostile it. takeover. It was an in, it was an inhospitable hostile takeover. <laughs> a very hospitable Southern Bell hostile takeover. Exactly, exactly. I <laughs> used I used a Southern Bell phrase the other day. I said, "Bless your heart" for somebody uh -oh. that it was the guy I smoked that hog for. <laughs> <laughs> Did he know? <laughs> I'm on. Kit. I'm gonna stop it there because this is live over Facebook. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you got to know Southern speak to know what exactly "bless your heart" means and the know, way it's delivered. Yep. If you know what it means, then you you know what it means, and it means that <laughs> man, I'm sorry, yeah. you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> much, or, I'm sorry, you're a derogatory term. You're like, you, you, I'm sorry, you're dumb. 
Oh, bless your heart. Yeah, oh, you know. Sweetie. Oh, sweetie. Oh, you shouldn't have chose that man. You shouldn't have chose that man. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, for those of those in the, from the South, at least, or born and well, raised. I, 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 I spent a few years in Mississippi in Pascagoula, which half of it. Pascagoula, uh, Mississippi. Been there. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, a it's, few years. 25 minutes from me right now. So. Okay, so yeah, you know, half of it is Ingalls Shipyard in the Gulf. Yep, sure is. And I, I, I survived a couple of hurricanes down there for a few years, and I went to a school, and so, you know, I might live in Iowa, but I know a bunch of Southern stuff, you know. I yeah. learned real quick. <laughs> oh, you it was down there? That's way south. That's the South Coast. You're going to soak it in real quick. And, yeah. I was I was the only white kid in my fifth grade class for uh, about five months. Yeah, yeah. It is very very diverse down here: Creole, Cajun, African American, Haitians. We just French, call it black. French and black. Oh, no. yeah. Creoles, Creole is a totally different thing. Them guys are nuts. Oh, oh yeah, dude, I'm Creole. Man. I'm Creole. What's up? You part of you? You're nuts, Felix. I'm not Except nuts. I got nuts. I'm no, talking with them. No, you're nuts, bro. <laughs> I, you just made me think of South Park. <laughs> Don't even get me started about <laughs> cake. My dog lives all day balls. <laughs> all the balls. Oh, and we, yeah. I, I threw it off off track that time. Sorry. No, it's oh, good. Good. Dave, and you and your damn capes. I need a cape. Yes. Hoods. Okay, you need a different. Oh, well. hey, hey, you in Alabama? You gotta watch out. Uh, I don't yeah, think hoodies are allowed. <laughs> you can't be putting that hood up in Alabama, just, bro. Dude, I'm thinking of uh, you know the. How about them hoods? Uh, hood. Alabama oh, is hoodie. no longer allowed to have hoodies. It, it, wouldn't that be a funny law where you weren't allowed to wear hoodies in the south? You, oh, seriously, I was like, all your hoodies have to be zip up. And they can't. Think of that. And then you said you're in Alabama. I'm like, oh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like every yeah. hoodie has to be like it has to be like a half neck zip up. You can't have like a regular hoodie because <laughs> you know those hoodies they make See, that uh it's, it's you know the hoodies they make that like, over your face. Oh yeah, yeah. As liberal, as liberal you, can as as you can look out. Yeah, like if, if, you know what I mean. If as liberal as I am and. I'm not a Democrat or liberal, and I'm a libertarian for sure. But uh, if they came out with a law that said you can't work, you can't wear white hoodies, I'd probably be okay with it. <laughs> Hold on, my do, Well, do you remember the show uh, on Netflix or on uh, Ari Shafir who got, who is a comedian who kind of, he goes hard in the paint for his comedy and his comedy. Goes hard in the paint. So Ari Shafir, which the only thing I didn't agree with, um, what? Uh, the only thing I don't agree with with Ari Shafir and his comedy that he did was because I didn't know this part. Like he always does a really horrendous skit after someone dies. Like, oh yeah, they had a big yeah, he, thing about that yeah, with Kobe. that. Well, he did it with Kobe, and I'm like, okay, cool. You fucked with the guy. He died. But to me, the way Kobe died, I don't think anyone should have ever touched that. Like, there's, there is a spot when a guy dies, when a guy dies with his daughter, and a guy who – and he called him a rapist. And it never – the court shit, there was never anything – you know, most yeah. likely because he, you know, he's rich, whatever. But it wasn't. He's a young kid. He did his shit, whatever. He he was out of the NBA, getting his life, like getting his shit. He was a dad. He was actually yeah. able to yeah. do. He said, "Fuck the world." He became the super athlete dad. He was flying his daughter and her friends and their parents to yeah, a freaking funny. game, to a game, yeah. because that's what he did. And he died with his daughter. And when it comes to that, like, I love comedy, the, the sicker, the better. But when it comes to a guy like that, you might make fun of what happened in his life and that he died or whatever. Good. He's a celebrity. 
But he, for, for one, he died with his daughter. Imagining a parent in any moment, and I'm not going to try to tear up here because it's really hard, but just imagining me as a parent in a life or death situation with your kid, like literally, I hate to say it, there was a person here recently who died saving his kid from death. And he had a choice. Watch my kid die or die and save my kid. And he died saving his fucking kid. Like literally yesterday or two days ago. Oh, man. And you have this fucking guy make fun of this person. No matter what they did in their life, he was with his daughter. Don't know what the fuck happened. Don't know if they were battling like, fuck you, dad. I hate your dad. Or just hugging each other. Doesn't it's matter. a helicopter. I've been in one. There's G forces. You don't have control of your body and you crash and you die. It's the only the aircraft that's trying to crash itself the entire yeah. time. And um, this comedian making fun of that. There's well, First Amendment rights, and but there's just what's right. And there, that shit that's, wasn't that's, right. That is a con- that is a conflict of morality. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, a conflict of morality. That. But this guy I, and you know agree. people are. People yeah, are honored, I mean, but talking about that, this is the same guy that I'm talking about who did the Amazing Racist show, which was very funny, who went in the hood wearing a fucking Klan outfit asking for people black that were, that was filling up their gas can for some gas in his one, one ounce gas can, or who went into a convenience store carrying a cross covered with tint linen to buy a lighter, you know, or brought his KKK outfit to a black dry cleaner for dry cleaner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this, or, or who drove a, a truckload of Mexicans to a job and then literally drove them to immigration <laughs> straight up from Home Depot to immigration. I know. I know. And it's I like, know. where is the line of comedy well, to, but me, my, my line is dead kids. Well, dead kids. Yeah, my line's dead kids. Oh, so my beautiful 40 year old wife knows dead baby jokes in sign language yeah i know because i met and hung out and drank with nurses and i thought maintenance guys were bad oh, uh, no. i have a shirt that says stacking bodies and this group of nurses we we're hanging out with goes we should get those and i'll wear them in the NICU i'm like what i'm like <laughs> and, and, and when i was skipping a beat she goes we do that shit on the daily i'm like they are they're morbid. They're morbid. You know what I mean? You're right though. You're you right. Have to do something there, to get through the shit. There is there is a well, a perceived line. Well it's a, it's a moral line and people's some people's are lower than others. But if you know, it literally is the first amendment. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. And that's a huge problem these days, is that too many people, not I won't say too many people, but I, lots of people broadcast their opinions. That is a First Amendment right. The biggest problem is people reporting it because they don't like what they're saying. That, well, they, they don't, they don't then spark then up a conversation. They don't spark up a conversation or debate. They just automatically report it. They don't debate on debate on facts. They debate on opinions and emotions. Which is utterly insane. Research what you do, what you believe in, and see if it sticks with your moral high ground. Whatever you want, however it's got to be. But the thing is, is that don't base your moral high ground off of a popular opinion. It's the biggest thing. And, and, and yes, we're diving. Felix, I apologize because that's starting to get into a little political type of thing. But be open, be open minded. That's all I can say. Be open minded. Yeah, you know, you can take it in the butt. Just be open minded. <laughs> See, and here's the lightheartedness. You know, of course, yeah. Be open minded, man. Hey, <laughs> what's what's the crap? I want my gay neighbors to arm, to guard their marijuana plants with AR-15s. Exactly. I don't yeah. want to get neighbors, so I'm trying to get fucking Dave to move in. <laughs> Dude, do you realize how good your house would look if you had advice from gay neighbors? Uh, my house already looks fabulous. Thank you very much. Would just come over and some the whoever would come over and just like edge your lawn for you. But like, oh, you needed a little touch up. 
<laughs> right. right. Rock out. What do you need done? Like, no, I mean, it would, I don't know. My experience. Um, there might be some people out there that don't agree with whatever, but hey, man, it's a different age, it's a different time. Um, my, my whole thing is the whole hypocrisy of all of that. You know, it's like, back? My back. You, you're back. Back. freaking internet it's the whole hypocrisy of all of that you know it's like this person did the same thing as this person but this person's the same this person's not you know are we talking about are we still talking about butt stuff uh, a little bit we're just talking about differences <laughs> of opinion and how people can't seem to have a discussion these days yeah. they automatically take a side and uh, you know stick with that side no matter what and my biggest thing is poor sportsmanship right now too you know whatever side may have won whatever side may have lost um it's literally just the poor sportsmanship from both sides that i see displayed amongst well, and, you know, and close like, friends like, like you said earlier you're a libertarian i'm a constitutionalist and i don't give a either side either way i'm states rights and constitutionalist you know and yep. either side, both sides have been acting like idiots for the past yes. three years, at least, you know. Dude, yeah, exactly. Uh, you just, this is getting political. Oh, my God. But Yeah, my bad. Um, hey, you know why you put no, a no, dead no. baby in a blender? You know why you put a dead baby in a blender feet first? I don't know. So if you we can this. Express. Here we go. Dave, uh, I don't know if we can do this live. Graham Jet, third episode, ban <laughs> life life ban. <laughs> Social media death. <laughs> and I can't find a damn thing to uh, uh, hold up. One go cool. go ahead, guys. Go and do your thing. Yeah. I'm looking for something. I got my second I got my second TikTok video pulled trying to light my socks on fire because it violated standards. And I'm like, what standards? And then you guys explain to me that there might be little kids that are watching it that are going to burn their house down trying to do the sock trick. And I'm like, oh, I never thought of that, you know, because you I don't have kids. Anything like this, you know, anything that's it's on the Internet is institutional. Uh, what, what I just had it in my head. Institutional influence. You know what I mean? TikTok, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, anything like that, that you never know when something is just going to take off, go viral, and somebody's going to light their socks on fire because this cool ass dude with a beard just fucking did it. <laughs> yeah. But then yeah. another, uh, another cool ass dude with a beard does it and lights his beard on fire and he's all fucked up. And then another seven year old does it and lights his house on fire. So, it's 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 weird. I've been, you know, observing this for for a long time since they allowed civilians on Facebook, so to speak. Because it used to be yeah. a, a, like a college only thing. Like it, you had to have a a .edu address to join. Then they opened it up. But you get this institutional influence. I think. Well, and a lot of that is the whole gratification thing now. Everybody wants to see how many likes or follows or hits they can get. That's, and I think that kind of wraps, uh, I guess I'm trying to wrap that up, institutional. You see Facebook, Instagram, whatever these is, this institutions of something you need to look up to, and you follow these people on YouTube and stuff like that. So you see them doing dumb shit, and you're like, oh, or, you know, just like all these challenges. Well, ALS challenge was good, you know, the ice bucket challenge that helped raise money, supposedly, you know, certain things like that. But these freaking snorting condom challenges, eating Tide Pod challenges. You think I about call that? it Darwin challenges. It's, it's right. an institutional. If you, if you don't put out a video with you trying to eat a Tide Pod, well, about two years ago, uh, you weren't cool. Or yeah, you, well, everybody thinks you were catchy, catchy. I guess I wouldn't have been a cool kid. I've been everybody a live kid. They be the next <laughs> yeah. Or the, the everybody thinks they could be the next Kardashian or the next Justin Bieber and get internet famous. You know, 
and that, that's the institutional influence. Like, yeah, early adopters and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, they've you have people that are literally famous for being famous, which is the most. They have no talent. Thing. Kardashian, uh, Hilton, plenty of people. Plenty uh, of any no, rapper people. after two thousand fifteen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know, I, you know, I know a few relatively famous YouTubers, and they just can't. They're like, dude, I live my normal life. YouTube has added to my revenue to do more of my normal life that I would do, and people like watching it, and that's fun because I like to do it, and I've I've grown accustomed to announce and basically announcing what I'm doing, demonstrating and narrating. You know, it's it's helped a lot of people's, but you you get them in person, and they're, you know, of course they're a little. Most of these people were, you know, inclusive and introverts and stuff like that. It's weird, but they get, you know, it's not personal to them. It's like in front of a camera, like here, but it's it's amazing. Oh, what was the trend the other day? Well, well, like Felix helped me and a couple of other people helped me realize like Uncle Cy, right? Her name's yeah. Dave. Yeah, and it is. It is. I, I, I didn't realize like the Uncle Cy thing, you know, that people... Why did you not realize that? I thought you made that shit up. <laughs> I actually, no. Um, it started out with I was either going to be named Gandalf or Cy. And then it got changed to Uncle Cy because I'm like everybody's uncle that comes to the Christmas party half loaded. Like, hey, let's go smoke a joint, you know. Um, you are, but there's also a character on well, a couple years ago, a well syndicated program that looks just like you and acts just like you mostly. And his name was Uncle Cy. He was just the old yeah. wise one that is, you know, was fucking fun and funny and and and. Um, you know, like I said, Felix and a couple other people helped me realize that, like, my online character, people actually dig, like, when I put up Beer and Sig Stroll. I never realized. I've had people hit me up, and they're like, hey, you ain't done a Beer and Sig Stroll in a while. You okay? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know? And it just, it didn't dawn on me that, you know, like, you're talking about the social media influences, and... And like I was saying, you don't realize the, the impact that you have on people just on social media. There, yeah, you're Dean for sure. We, dude, I seven, eight, nine years old. It's funny because they were literally paving the highway in front of my grandfather's house, and they leased his land to pour to dump to store the asphalt. Those were my Himalayan mountains. I took my BB gun, I hunted squirrels in mountains of asphalt. You yes. know what I mean? Just yes. weird, crazy shit like that. And, you know, it was in the middle of my grandfather's junkyard. So we had all these old crazy cars. Then we had mountains of asphalt. And, like, we had squirrels and shit running. I was shooting squirrels with a Red Rider BB gun in mountains of asphalt surrounded by junkyard. Did the uh, neighbor's dogs eat your fucking turkey, too? <laughs> uh, yes, actually, they did. Um, we had a deer we couldn't find one day, and we came back and literally saw the neighbor's dogs freaking eating my dead deer. We couldn't find them. Yeah. Yes, I am country. I'm country when it comes down to it. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, I we grew up like that. We didn't grow up with a phone in our hand and stuff like that. So... But, I mean, we can adapt. We're adapting right now um, and realizing trends and realizing, you know, the big picture. So, got a little philosophical right there. Well, and like, like we were talking earlier, you know, um, I know there's a couple people that, one, um, on this syndicate um, don't agree with me. And for whatever reasons, that's cool. I know there's a couple people that aren't on this syndicate that don't like that I'm on this syndicate. I don't care. My uh, whole goal is to stop the 22. Anything I can do to help end, and we all know it's higher than 22 a day. We all do. That's a bullshit yeah. number. But I don't care. I would sit and have tea with Hitler if it would stop a veteran suicide. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
<laughs> Just speaking of the comment from Dean. <laughs> so I'd be like, fuck, dude, I was high when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, you already, bro, you already know I'm high most of the time. You know, Mama Jade's over there. So, I've just been trying to make up. Watching, watching YouTubers. I hope we're YouTubers excited. watching TikTokers and Beboppers. All these kids, I don't get your music. What's going on? There ain't no Bebop. <laughs> we're the four times. We're black guys. Oh my gosh. No, it's it's weird the world we live in, man. Like uh I was born show my age. <laughs> I'm not the oldest one here. I was born in eighty two. So Dave. Uh, you're all, what, what year are you born, Dave? I was Six. born in the best year ever, 1969. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Dave has the coin on 69. We're, we're all within like 13 years. You know, I'm 74. We know. Which we is know. the best okay. year. I'm just saying. That's the year Black that mortars were born. Here Black don't crack. Black don't crack. Born to be king. We're your princes of the universe. I'm going to steal one of your earlier phrases, Felix. Stay black, man. Hey, man. <laughs> stay black. <laughs> well, I kind of can't help it. I don't have that much money yet. Michael Jackson money. <laughs> so if you guys order more cases of barbecue sauce, we can work on that. I'm just saying. <laughs> get the, I'll get us doing get everything, but I ain't inviting kids over. I'm just letting you know. We ain't gonna have a you, you, you must be this tall to ride this ride. It's gonna be you must be this tall to ride this ride. You you going for the Michael Jackson spa treatment? Terrible. I'm just terrible. This is terrible. <laughs> We're a bunch of idiots and we still got three people watching at least. Did that shit work? Oh, come on, Dean. Hey, we I, we we're I see people watching. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I got people watching on TikTok, I think, um, maybe. That TikTok thing, Felix, what the heck did you get me into, bro? <laughs> I brought you into the Matrix, brother. I'm going to make you famous. And Dave, how did you – so, Dave, ask me this. How did you find your your Easter egg on my website? Don't say where oh, it's no. at. Just ask me how you found it. I saw it the day you put it up. I went to look for the leggings. Really? Yeah. And it led me right to that. That is crazy because that's in the opening of the website. You have to click on something to get to that. I did. I clicked on something and it took me to that. And then I was like, holy shit, Felix made a page for me. Freaking <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was awesome that you used my um, button up shirt as the display on your website. I'm, you know, I was like, holy crap, Mike, that's me. That's my shirt. I wear that shirt, you know. Yep. But then you found you found that little Easter egg. Yep. It took you a minute to say something because I had I've had that up for a long time. Bro, I, I found that like like I said when you first put it up, I thought you I I, I responded. I was like, holy crap, Felix made a th- thing for me on his website you know yeah, yeah. i've known about that bro i, I guess well, no, I, just, I don't mean that link i made that said to dave stuff right no that's what you're talking about right no i'm talking about where like i clicked on your website and it pulled up and it said uncle Cy leggings and something else oh yeah no 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 there's an easter egg on my web you don't oh you don't know I haven't been. I, I, I'm gonna have. Oh, I'm gonna no okay. Before. That's why I didn't say anything. So you, there is an Uncle Cy Easter egg on BBQSauce.com. So that's why the guy said about the Uncle Cy Easter egg earlier. Yes, there is an Uncle Cy Easter egg on BBQSauce.com. You're awesome, bro. <laughs> there is an Uncle Cy Easter egg. It's like if you want to find the Uncle Cy, there is an Easter egg on BBQSauce.com. And once it's found, it will change to another spot um, because I can link whatever I want to whatever I want. I can link shit to one letter on a post as an Easter egg, as a link to something and not have it highlighted. So, yeah, there is. A, so I, I'm glad I didn't. 
I'm glad I didn't buy. I didn't glad I didn't bust the egg. I'm pretty proficient at making Easter eggs. I'm glad I didn't bust the egg because I thought you found it. I was like, holy shit, Dave found his own egg. There's an <laughs> Easter egg on BBQSauce.com. Now I got to go look for it after we're done. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. I thought Dave found it. I almost I almost gave it up, but I made him tell me where he thought he found it and explain it because what did Eddie Murphy say? What me? I did not <laughs> did not deny. <laughs> Hold up. I'll be right back. I want to rush this. I need to go hit the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I just did. That's what I well, just did. For you normal people, that's take a bathroom break. Yeah. Let's not go five hours like we did last. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think I can do another one of the marathon shows. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, wow. Like, I did not that, have a good day. Was, I'm going to say that was a blast, dude. You know, talking with oh, you. It was awesome. Dude. For sure. Awesome, for sure. But, man, I... <laughs> I... <laughs> Didn't get some stuff done that I needed to do in order to be on R the next day. And I was like, oh, sorry, I got to tap out. It's like, man. Well, and then, you know, like a couple of days later, Felix goes in the marathon TikTok about doing the hog on the grill. You know, it was kind of like boom, 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 you know, marathon shows. Yeah, and I had just come off a weekend of an event as well, and I was still, man. Well, you, you, yeah, you got a life, you got kids, you got a job, you know. I I got a cat. That's about all I got, you know. I got, so I do have some. I heard Dave over here bringing him up how much pussy he has. I do have a small <laughs> advancement in the car project. I did buy a lift. So you can see the post there, small post right now. It's not in place, but it's it's a Max Jax. It's a six k lift. Uh, it's like basically a portable lift. You put flush mount anchors in, and these things have wheels on the back of them. So if you want to just clear the floor, you can push it off to the side. The power unit is like on a little cart. It's one ten hydraulic pump, and yeah. So I've got basically everything put together but i'm trying to place my my columns where i want them so right. the, the things i'm gonna have to do with this car i gotta take the rear subframe out i gotta take the front subframe and drop the engine and trans out of the car so i it was a good investment just to get all that stuff done i'm basically doing a resto mod on this car it is a 1990 r32 gtr um Pretty expensive nice. these days. I bought it pretty cheaply back in 2016. I love this car. It's one of my dream cars. But now I have a bunch of parts in the stack on it. And I don't like Sunday driver cars anymore. I, <laughs> I'm scared to take this thing in traffic. Like the, the, the things have skyrocketed in price so much. The parts are ridiculous. And like, I want to get it built. Maybe I just told Dean that uh, he was saying he wasn't feeling good, and I'm like, you better feel better, motherfucker, because I'm a. If not, I'm gonna bury you in a sweet baby raised gallon jar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I, I want to get this car done. And, you know, I, I've got other projects and stuff like that. I've loved this car for four years. Want to get it done? 500 horsepower. Wham bam. Thank you, man. Good touring car. Good suspension, tires, wheels. And roll Just enough to sell it to the sauce boss. Hey man, you can come over with the right cash. Have it all hey day. man, I, I need an incognito car, so <laughs> this is not one talking, of those. Yeah, you were talking about getting that Lincoln Continental. What are you talking about, Felix? Dude, uh, I'm trying that's why I'm building a garage so I can have multiple vehicles. <laughs> Told my wife Lincoln when we got married. Told my wife when we got married. One day I will have seven cars. Huh? What? One day I will own a total of seven cars. I didn't say running or not running, but I will own. I have three. I have three right now, so I'm well on my way. But this well, thing, bro, 
trust me, I'm I'm a gearhead too. I don't give a I don't give a crap what kind of car it is. I'm a gearhead. I love wrenching. Um, I helped a buddy rebuild a '66 Mustang, and we put a 1985 Ford 351 in it. You know, I mean, it was a lot of modifying and like, hey, let's see if this fits. Oh, wow, it fit. Oh, nope, no, it didn't. You know, it was a lot of that. But we, you know, in about nine months, got it up and running, and that thing scared me. And I've had uh, a lot of cars, you know. All right, guys, we are at the top of the second hour. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, this is G.I. Kyle. When I'm not taking shirtless selfies on Instagram and drinking White Claw while having hot sex with my wife, Karen, and making truck videos, I like to listen to the shows on VRS, Veteran Radio Syndicate, your home for the best quality veteran entertainment. Welcome to today's episode of Beer BQ Headquarters, where men eat meat. I'm Jody, and this is my boyfriend, Tom. We once wore a bear suit while the bear was alive while rubbed down in beer BQ barbecue sauce. We like Sweet Baby Ray's because we go to Waffle House sober. We can divide by zero. We like Nickelback. We like our meat so rare, we walk up to the cow and bite the cow. We like tofu. So order some beer BQ barbecue sauce today and let the angels sing. <laughs> That's just the most retarded shit. It's too hilariously funny not to post. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. Thanks, Jorge. <laughs> Master Greek Jesus. So, uh, yeah, guys. Um, yeah, Jesus. follow VRS. Um, I'm just letting you know um, there's some more stuff coming. Um, we're going to have more content on VRS. We're going to have more color on con- our, our VRS. And I mean, by color, I mean by. by diversity in I content i thought you were it. i am it i already it's in my contract you guys can't hire another black dude this that's is totally what it is. we got to change your nickname to token like no off no just toby and anyway no <laughs> it's one of those things i'm i'm it like you, another one come in and like tag I already got the network you need to go to grunt style sorry <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you know black rifle had to have a burned up blown up dude it's all good but he's kind of black <laughs> I don't know if it's oh, black from the explosion. <laughs> crispy 11B. That dude's crispy a, 11B, that dude's, baby. That's I a, love crispy. A homie, though. He's badass. No, he is badass. And I've actually messaged Crispy, like personally on Instagram, on some of his stuff back and forth. I've actually sent Crispy some barbecue sauce, and I asked him to keep it quiet. So, nice. uh, yeah. But, yeah, Crispy's cool shit. Um, but, yeah, no. Yeah, it's one of those things. We got some new stuff coming up. To look forward to, so don't sleep on VRS people. You know, we got you know, the scramjet is just literally the tip of the iceberg. You know what I'm talking about, it's going to get bigger. Just don't worry, just keep your head down, keep doing what you're doing, and eventually it should pay off. <laughs> it's okay, we got it, we're going to do it, and don't worry about it. So, Jay, Jay. Jay, just just stop cooking. You should be cooking and watching. <laughs> right? Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, that's not how you do that. You put the stuff in the jar with baking soda, baking soda, baking soda, not flour. If you're smoking some meat right now, like it's out there on the grill. Yeah, you can watch and and, and smoke some meat if you're good. I, I bet I, I bet her dog was involved with it. <laughs> um, much as we hear about her devil dog, probably. <laughs> right? Yeah. That devil dog trying to kill her and poof, flower everywhere. I could just see that. It hit the ceiling fan and went everywhere. And that's not a and that's not a marine joke either. That she has got a devil dog apparently. Yeah. So <laughs> powder coat. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere Dean. Uh, no, I'm really to go back to an earlier subject. I'm really stuck on this truck gun issue. I want to know what why, why? Why my truck gun? You want to see my truck gun? You want to be my truck gun? I'll be right back. So, 
I want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I, I would. You know, I'm just interested. You know, people comment whatever you want to do. Like, what's your truck gun and what's your backup plan? You know what I mean? Well, like, and, and my, my thought on that is a lot of these people that are like, oh, I carry my AR-15 in my truck or my car all the time. Okay, in all reality, how quickly can you pull that thing? Yeah. Do you, yeah, yeah. what's your introductory weapon to a situation? That's, I, I'm a little weird. I've been in some weird situations in my life, you know. Okay. Yeah. Say you're sitting you know? in your you're sitting in your pickup truck. You're yeah. right. Yeah. You got a double barrel. AR. Hello, Clarice. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, were you ready to look at my truck gun? Hold on. Hold on, Felix. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Cy, Cy, you're exactly right. Like, what is your primary? That's that's what I look at. What is your quick draw? What is your primary? What do you have right. at hand for an idiot road rager that literally pulls a gun on you? Um. And then what happens if that gets stopped to a point where, like, somebody fires around into your vehicle? Obviously, you evade and escape as possible. But if somebody is chasing you or you get in the middle of a situation and your handgun is not cutting it, this is my question. Like, God forbid, nobody wants to be in that situation whatsoever. But if you are and you are trained enough to employ a weapon like that, what do you have as a backup? To your All right. CCW so pistol. Back your, to what you're AR. saying. In my car, where I have my CCW pistol. Yep. Luckily, I have an alien gear holster. Alien gear was up. So my <laughs> concealed carry, my concealed carry mag, my concealed all my shit on my hip. I bought an extra uh, shell to attach to the mount they sent for my car. So yep. it's in a mount. A lock mount, so when you grab it, you drop your thumb to release it in case you get in a rollover because you're gonna fly everywhere or whatever. So when I when I get in my car, it immediately as I sit in, one of my procedures is grabbing my stuff out, dropping it here. But I have that if someone walks up to my car, and why I'm saying I'm showing you what I have for a truck gun because it's a little bit of di a different idea. So yes, I have that close quarter door to door. You know, or get out of a carjacking, whatever. Because the first thing they're gonna say when I carjack them, they get carjacked, get out. And I'm gonna be like, yes, sir. Have my hand down here, click that, get out my vehicle, turn around, and be like, get out my shit. You know, <laughs> but, but my idea, and after being in the hills and practicing it, my truck gun is not for self defense to the point where it's self defense for the person right here next to me. It's self-defense where I need a short barrel rifle so I can get from point A to point B. Um, when shit goes down, I can go, okay, cool. I have my go bag. I have my, my truck gun. And like I said, I need to go point A to point B, but I need something that's not full size, you know, scope and, you know, blah, 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 this other bullshit. But I can, I can compactly move. And if I have to in my truck, drive and engage so yeah. what i have is what they call a ar pistol amply painted yeah. amply painted empty cleared yeah. Yeah. um really and this really is short enough and i've tried it that if i have to i can sit this on my window you know yeah. and i have iron sights on it because right now this is a point and shoot this is not a long gauge engagement this is just yep yeah. Get to home, get to wrecking order, uh -huh. you know, and uh, everything Side. is equipped. Huh? Side no, I was it. just agreeing. I, I remember when he got that powder coated, it, uh, the colors are awesome on that. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, sure. And Marilyn. so that, and I, and I thought about it because recently they had the issues with all the people coming to people's cities, and I have some cop friends, and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, we hear there's a busload of people. So I went some spots in town and not like defending. I defended people I cared about. And I sat there and I was like, I'm going to bring this with me. And if I see some shit going down, I'm just going to stand there just like this finger off the trigger, hands, hands up. How you doing? Well, what you about? And if you ain't about nothing and that's the thing. 
and it's small enough and compact enough and compact as I want to get to something that I, I want to bust because this can go from zero to 60 out to 300 yards if I have to. Um, but this is what I consider a truck gun, just iron sights, flip down. But when you're doing your thing, you just point at a guy and pull a trigger. You're going to hit him somewhere. Yeah. You know? And if you need to, you need to get a little cool, just flip it up and you just go to town and do what you do. But, you know, why I love South Dakota is because I see everything happening before it gets here. That's the biggest thing I love yeah. about South Dakota. I look yeah. at the news and it's riots here, riots there. I'm like, ain't riots in South Dakota. I drove through town. And if you've been in a place where the – if you've been to college or high school in the South, <laughs> you have felt the intensity of uh, freaking jumping, like a beating, a beatdown, you know, homies against homies. And that's how it is when you're in a country that's about to explode or a city that's about to explode. That palpable feeling of, yep. oh, fuck. And if you don't know what it is, you're just a part of it. You just something from the crowd. But, do, you know, being who I am, I, I, went, I went through town. I went to all the spots where I felt that you would feel that. And I'm like, South Dakota's kind of cool. Ain't shit going on. You know, like, we're good. But they did get the whole report. I drove around trying to find the buses and see who was. And I wasn't going to shoot them. I was just going to watch them. Because at the end of the day, you're coming to my home and you want to fuck some shit up. Yeah. I literally recently watched a video of a protester who is a veteran. She's a black female and she's a Marine. I respect the shit out of this woman because she's on the left side. But yeah. she found these protesters. It was these four white dudes and they, were, they had gas masks strapped to their hip. They had, I don't know if they had guns, but they had some other shit and blah, blah, blah. And she straight up walked up to him and go, hey, how you doing? We're occupying this area. We're protesting. If you're here for good to protest, come and join us. But if you're any fu for any fuckery, you're trying to burn my shit down, I want to let you know I am a proponent of the Second Amendment. She goes, and I'm also a fucking Marine. So uh, I have a bird's eye view on what you do because that's yeah. why I know where you're at. And she straight up told him. And I respect her because she is a liberal to the best degree, as I would say, because she's a liberal that knows her rights. And, it, it, and uses her rights. She's not a liberal person that just, I'm a liberal. Guns are bad. Fuck the world. She goes, I believe in this, but I also believe in this. Because that's what people are. We're complex. We're not one dimensional. And I respected her for that. I don't, you know, I might not like that she's on a street corner blocking traffic, you know, bumping a certain person's name into the e ethos. But I respect her for the fact that she's an American ex uh, experiencing and exercising her rights, but also exercising her rights on both ends because that's what we are. We are not one-dimensional people. You might be a liberal and also love guns. You might be a conservative and also hate guns. It is what it is. Dude. <laughs> you, of oh. course, we set records this year for uh, firearm purchasing. Over and over and over again. It's oh, like a 20, 21 million firearms purchased oh, this year. Try to, all ammo. try to find ammo for anything, you know. I just went through my reloading stuff earlier. I have a five stage turret, do nine mil, three on blackout, whatever. And I yeah. have a couple boxes of pistol primers and five, five, six primers. If I would have put that on the internet right now, like with one tray missing, I could get probably four hundred dollars for that crap. It's oh, ridiculous! Easy. easy, yeah. I'm not, but I mean, I'm gonna. It's mine. I, I bought it. I probably in a, I keep it in the climate controlled environment. I'm gonna use it, but it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous the the amount that ammo slash reloading components have gone up. I mean, oh yeah. Well, and I'm lucky. I got a. Uh, seven six two five four R Mosin. So that ammo is still cheap. Oh, you just um, say Mosin. We just say Mosin, and we know, and we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Nagant. You can be like, I have a Nagant. Yeah, yeah. Sporterized Mosin. I, I love. I'm 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 seriously in love with that gun. That thing will reach out and touch. You know. Well, bird and primers—the biggest thing is got they got 
corrosive primers and a lot of the tin can ammo. And that will is not good for your barrel, but most of those barrels are not in the healthiest position, I don't think. I well no, no. I, we no no, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago where I got lucky and got a really decent Mosin, all numbers matching. They hadn't changed anything, you know, blah blah blah. Um, then as soon as I got it, I cleaned it, oiled it, you know, all of that maintenance. And, um, dude, that thing scares me. It fucking hurts my shoulder about after five rounds. Oh yeah. Yeah. Still back plate, man. Oh, now, cool. Dean, Dean absolutely works in a bad neighborhood. Yeah. I had my wife about six months ago saying, Hey, there's some weird stuff around mobile. Especially on the Gulf Coast down here, we're kind of close to some beach towns, and you know the traffickers. Well, not as bad this summer, but there was a lot. They hit these spring breakers and stuff up, you know. And my wife travels a little bit for work, back and forth across the bay, and uh, absolutely, she asked me, "Hey, will you teach me how to shoot a pistol?" I was like, "Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I am your husband that does not mix well." I want you to go to, you know, a proper training class with female, male instructor. Doesn't matter as long as it's not me, because right. spouses, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, spouses and significant others have a predisposition. As much as you think you work together at home, if I try to take my wife out and teach her yeah, how to you shoot, don't teach your woman how to shoot. Yeah, I've been shooting for too long. I've shot IDPA. I've shot. Two gun and three gun competitions, USPSA. like I have my, yeah, I've, USBSA matches still, still only matches. I've shot, I've been around so much machismo crap, and <laughs> the, it, the, it's the, not that it's machismo. It's that I've learned very, very good techniques from very, very good people in the special operations world. I was down there with Herbert Field, you know, first special, special operations group. Shot a lot with all the kinds of different people in the Air Force. And then seven special forces group right there, Duke Field. I shot with those guys a lot. Like, I, I thought I knew how to shoot. And then I shot with them, and it was like, oh. Man. Yeah, and I thought I knew how to shoot when I joined IDPA. And then I saw that shit, and I'm like, motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. IDPA was good to get your feet with. IDPA is still good. To well, get no, your that's feet what I'm with. saying. Like, that's where those guys, because if you look up a guy called Mike Seeklander, I can't think of what this company is, but he was the guy who made the training course for the uh, for the air marshals in the beginning mm -hmm. of the air marshal corps. He was a Marine, yep. a former Marine, former competitive shooter, still a competitive shooter. But and he talks about it like he got to the rank, you know, the air marshals where it was all run by Delta and shit. But he was a competitive yep. shooter coming from the Marine Corps. And when he ran through the course, he did really good. And they were like, just as you do in the military, if you do well, you get fucked. They're like, you can make the yeah. new shooting course for Rangers or for uh, air marshals. But this guy said that what made him a better shooter than a warfighter was playing the game of a warfighter because you actually get to pull a trigger without any detriment effects of getting hit by a bullet. So That's it cool. makes you a better pew pew pewer. And a oh, situation awareness, like one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, courses I've ever made was called Cubicles of Death. I hope someone's still out there running it because it is a mind fuck cubicle. You have a no shoot shoot target. And what you do is your first three targets have to be exactly the same. Shoot, no shoot, shoot, no shoot, shoot, no shoot. But the way the lanes run up, it's cubicle. So you don't see you run sideways like you're running down cubicles. And at the fourth target, you change it up to no shoot, shoot like no shoot, shoot. Or how it is? No, no shoot, shoot. Or, yeah, the guy is, yeah. is reversed. Well, what that does is you get used to one, two, three, bam, one, two, three, bam, one, two, three, bam. You get to the next one because we don't want trigger pullers; we want trigger thinkers. Yep. And every person that I did that to, minus five people, me not being fair, I'm not a fair judge. Five people not minus me because I knew what was coming up. I made a stage. Yeah. All shot the good guy because they pulled the trigger and as a reaction, not a reaction to what they saw. You yeah. know, they they broke the brain finger barrier of bag I bam. It was just I did this, I'm gonna yeah. do it again. 
and everyone, fuck, you know, and I'm Stop. like, well, yeah. this is why we do IDPA in National Defense of Pistol because you need to be mindful of the fact that it's defensive pistol. Defensive. Yeah. De- defensive. It's, it, well, it's, it's a weird world you get into for sure. Like, uh, you know, we shot it way, uh, quite a few rounds. You know, at Corbon, and we went to Sturgis a couple times, and I actually came down here to Florida and tried to get into a, a, another range down here, Scambia Gun Club, and it, whatever, some weird drama took over. But I rolled up with my Steyr 40, <laughs> which not a lot of people shoot a Steyr. And yeah, I, yeah. Hard time is. But yeah. I love <laughs> Brother, let me let me just show you. We're, we're I love your style. I love your style, you fucker. I hate that you showed me dude. that gun with a low board access. It was so low. Oh, the my. board access was so low on the gun. Dude, oh, my you see that? That's so fully gripped. It was so. Is that gun that? unloaded? Is that gun unloaded? Oh my god, he's holding a firearm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, is. I'm a black man. Don't shoot me, officer. Please don't shoot me. Oh my god. This gun. <laughs> oh, this weapon. Mm. Felix will make fun of me. And I, make fun of, I make fun of his uh, sky high XD bore axis. You know, it's you all know. good. You make fun of my reliable but, freaking sky high bore axis XD. Oh, my I, need reliable. My baby girl. I need to go feed her again and put her up. Right <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, I mean that's that's one of the big things I I thought about. You know, is basically re. re Re-engage your target. Big thing, bore axis is physics and stuff like that. Yeah, I can get real deep into it. Lower the bore axis, the more it's going to go back into your hands like this. Yeah. When you have a higher bore axis, it's going to be a full, you know, you're going to have more of a fulcrum at your wrist if it's further up than the top line of your finger. Which the XD for me, I've shot many XDs, I've shot Felix's XD, I've shot XD 45s, 40s, 9s, all this stuff, and the top slide is like an inch tall. And that, that just gets to me. Like, ah, I don't know. Like, well, it, 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 it's personal preference, obviously. People shoot exactly. XDs very, very well. Very well. I, I can't knock them. Just for me, Physically and physics wise, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, well, and, and, and like you know, I told you, I own a high point forty five. I love that thing because there's no muzzle raise. It's a brick. You know, yeah. when you it stays right there. You know, the whole slide's a brick, and it's down low enough where it literally just transfers back into your arm. That's yeah, you, like. You, Rest of his weight, yeah. The, the weight that it doesn't raise up, you know. Yeah. And yeah. my whole big thing is it's better to have a weapon than have no weapon. You're right, you know. So right. I don't care if it's XD, I don't care if it's uh, you know, dragon off, I don't care if it's high point. At least you whatever, got one, whatever you practice with and are proficient with. That is yeah. the biggest thing. Uh, and that's what I told my wife. I'm like, you need, you can handle my my styre, my shield, my M and P's. We can get it. if you like a Glock, that's fine. I'll buy you a Glock. Whatever, whatever fits you and is most comfortable for you, and then you learn to use it. So that that's the biggest thing. I used to sell guns for a little bit, um, legally, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not obviously, but no, uh, it, it was like people would come in and like, yeah, we sort of sold the cheap crap Taurus and at the time, cheap crap Taurus is a re- decently respectable name now for Brazil. But uh, like what is comfortable in your hand? What is a natural, what is a natural point when you grab it? Does your natural, like your wrists, most people wrists are not the same resting point you know what i mean most people grips are not the same so you find the grip angle of the weapon that you like well and, 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 and then you, you go from there you you got to find something that you're comfortable with not only yeah. with holding but being kept comfortable with the pull you know it's like yeah, yeah. you can go get a 600 you know or nine thousand dollar block but if you're not proficient with it you're not yeah. proficient firing you're not proficient pulling it does no good. 
and that's what this tire when I first started shooting it, it's like 111 degree grip angle. It literally, when I put my hand on it, my hand melted into it, and I'm like, oh, okay. A Glock didn't do that for me. Uh, MMP didn't do that for me. A Sig didn't do that for me. A CD, a CZ didn't do that for me. This thing just melted into me. My thumb weld went directly in there. Boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, there we go. Too bad they're not more popular, but it's just me. Yeah, I, I know a bunch of civilians, and they're like, you know, yeah, I'm going to go out and get this Glock, or I'm going to go out and get this Sig. And I'm like, are you going to take the classes? And they're like, no. And it's like, well, then that fucking pistol's worthless for you. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you, you could have a fucking, you know, $1,200 Glock, and if you don't know how to fire it and you're not proficient at it, um, when shit hits the fan, that $1,200 Glock is going to be worthless. Oh, it's going to be worth about $400 at the pawn shop where that criminal that takes it off of you takes it. Right, you yeah, know. exactly. And then, I mean, they're going to report the serial number, or it's going to be worth about $400 on the street. They're going to take a pawn shop because all those serial numbers are registered. So, yeah. But it, it, first off, be comfortable literally in the hand with the weapon, and then learn the manual of arms, and then learn how to shoot it. Because, I mean, Glock's well, obviously safe. So, action, you want to learn how to shoot a book? It's pretty easy. You put the book on the wall. You walk away about a couple yards and you shoot it. If you don't hit it, you just keep pulling trigger until you hit it again. Sideways. I, I, I got a hole in the oh, wall. I got to be sideways, dog. Is it because I'm Jewish? You had your hand like this. I had my hand like this. You had your hand like this. I had my hand like this. You had your hand like this. You don't tell me how I have my hand. It's my hand. You're trying. To, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, did. I forgot. I you, had that, you had that wop. You had that wop. My bad. You had you that wop. You had that wop. You had that wop. I was watching. Yeah, that wop. Yeah, that wop. Yeah, that white ass privilege. <laughs> you had. So, uh, you had I'm gonna give you the option right right now. I'm gonna. Um, I'm a. I got a roll. You had I got a roll. I got a roll. You and Dave can keep rolling because <laughs> you can end the show. Well, how how fast do you got to roll? Uh, not very fast, but I got to roll. Come on. He's a veteran. He can't roll fast anywhere. Yeah. Well, let me go get another. I'm going to leave go. that one alone, too. <laughs> let, me, let me go get another uh, little bit of ice and a drink, and we'll do some closing thoughts, man. Like I said, we didn't want to. Yeah. We're closing up on two and a half hours. We did five hours last week. We don't need to do that again. I got I to gotta work in the morning, and I got another show to do tomorrow night for sure. <laughs> So, uh, uh, yeah, give me just a second and we'll do some final thoughts, maybe. So, but yeah, bouncing off of what Webb was talking about, I got some uh civilian friends. They're like, Oh, I'm gonna get a pistol, I'm gonna shoot this guy from so far. I'm like, One, you're not gonna be able to shoot that guy with the pistol. Two, if you happen to hit him, it's not gonna hurt him, you know. And everybody's all like, Call of Duty, like, Oh, I can shoot this guy with a pistol in the face from 100 yards. Yeah, no. You're not going to do that, you know. One second. I'm, I got customers texting me by orders. Sweet, bro. Christmas. Well, no, they're just asking me questions, and I'm just responding about orders that are coming in for Christmas. If I know, because I know I only had five orders for the 18th for that Christmas day. So I'm just making, letting them know, like, yeah, I sent it before Christmas. And, um, and uh, you know, had a guy who was in a weirdly odd deployed location, and he sent me a message, and I told him he got a broken jar. Well, he got one broken jar. I sent him both jars. I couldn't send him. I would if I would have had an original rub to send him. I would sent him another original rub, but I'm out. But I sent him another original that did break and a mustard just because he had to wash it because it's the principle of the point. You supposed to get your shit in ready to ready to wear, ready to rock, and I. Uh, Pony it up. What does it doesn't cost me anything? Tech it does, and I'm sure in the future there'll be accountants yelling at me for this shit. But <laughs> fuck, it doesn't cost me anything to send people their order again. I don't care. The person that matters is the customer, first and yes. foremost. 
up front and fuck it. The company needs to go back in the back and go, okay, now we need to figure out. And I got that from the military because we would have a lot of issues that people would try to hammer on top of the in issue. And it's like, no, let's fix the issue first because we have a mission before we do fucking paperwork. Like paperwork can all be done at the back end, not the front end. And they were hide, holding shit up because oh, we need to have this signed off. And I'm like, all right, there's a plane sitting on a flight line waiting to fly. Can we just do our job and then do that job? Because that's not our job. At the end of the day, our job is to put warheads on foreheads, shit in the air. You know, and yeah, so that's where I got that mentality because I refuse and and I really hope whoever is running whatever part of my company, however big it gets, remembers that because I will still I will still hold true and throw a freaking high beam carbon laser through my shit if I find it not working right. Like I will go through I will go through the department and be like fired <laughs> like hiring fucking like whatever just like are you really like, I'm not, you, know what, I you? you know what? I won't fire you. I will make it even better. I will be just like the military. This is your new job. Let's see how you do it. Your new job. <laughs> What's your I'll new make job? You, make your new job. Is this oh, that sounds good. Oh, does it? Cool. Go pack them boxes. But <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, dude, it, it teaches people because in the military, you can't get fired unless you really like you. You have to pretty much. Do some heinous shit to get kicked out of the military, and I will do that in my company. Like, oh, 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 that's all you did. Oh, cool. So we're gonna change your job because technically, in the contract, your job is not set at what you do. Because I want everyone to be able to rotate. I want everyone to be able to do what everyone else does. Because some people get bored at doing one thing, and if that's what you want to do, let's roll. But if that's not what you want to do, here you want to go do orders. You want to go production. You want to go do this. Cool. Makes life interesting. What's up, Dave? Bro, you might as well hire me because I get texts from people that ask me beard barbecue questions. And that's when I hit you up and I'm like, hey, what's up with this? Or what's these? Or what's this? You know, and I'm like, I'm 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 not really affiliated with beards. I am, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, you're affiliated. You're <laughs> What, with beard? Dude, you're more than affiliated, dude. You're beard blood. You're beard royalty. Yeah, but you're people think, people think I have answers to stuff. They're like, you know, hey, how many of these sauces are left? And I'm like, I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> you need to give Dave a live inventory update. All right, guys, so I got to roll. So uh, my end up is, uh, you know what? Like I have start, start saying on my TikToks when I leave out. Follow us on TikToks. Um, I love you guys. Go out there tomorrow. Just be again human. I'm going to cap it at that. All the other bullshit, all the other words aside. If you don't feel that you ended the day as a good human, try again. Just do something in your day to be a good human. And I did today. I was a good human. I might have talked shit. I'm not saying you cannot talk shit inside of your own vehicle or mind or under your breath or close to the person behind their back. <laughs> but still, be a good human. <laughs> Do your best. I'm not trying to fucking, like, you know, just hemlock you, just, you know, kneecap you on this. But do your best to be a good human. Like, if you would have throw punched that person, maybe don't throw punch them. Maybe give them a pat on the back and go, Bless your heart. Yeah. Just be and that's what I got from the sauce boss. Dave, what you got? Um, just trying to like back up on what you said. Just be a good human. Be good people. You know, you don't know what somebody else is going through. And so just by holding a door open, just by saying, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Might brighten somebody's day, you know, and we need more of that in the world where you just do random acts of kindness. You know. Hey. Web. Web. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Maybe you know, a flag or a dog bark flag. Those dogs. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm good with dark barks. You know, 
I just want to listen to what they're saying. I might be able to translate. Um, <laughs> not really. <laughs> no, no. Uh, echoing that sentiment as well. Um, we're on here doing our thing, keeping each other company, having fun. No real format or agenda. I mean, we might work a small agenda in, but nothing too crazy. Um, hopefully having another uh, co-host coming on uh, first of the year. One of my buddies over from Florida. We'll hopefully introduce him soon. He's got some family stuff to take care of. Holiday stuff. No big deal. But I have a blast on this show for sure. Um, hopefully it's given some people an outlet. Hopefully, um, we're a little nuts, we're a little loose, we're a little crazy, but uh, I'm going to do this to myself. <laughs> Wrap that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to get outnumbered here with three Air Force vets and one Army guy. No, see, the guy that uh, we hopefully we're going to have on, He, you look like his dad. <laughs> So, and I think he's going to dig it. At that. I think you're both going to dig it. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if we can get him on. Like I said, he's, uh, he told us after the first of the year, we try to push him to this show, but, uh, he's got to travel and do some other things. But, uh, no, I, I think, I think we'll dig it. And like I said, it's scramjet. We, we kind of do what we want, talk about what we want. We run through the comments and basically change our vector to that. Of course, Dean, uh, always in there. Keep joining, brother. <laughs> the jet crashes <laughs> made the controls responsible for the accident because the paperwork wasn't complete. They need a paper trail. Absolutely. freaking lutely And we're not leaving a paper trail as we exit this edition of Scramjet. Felix? Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, dogs went upstairs. I guess the family's here, so it's time for me to go up and uh, be hush um, and pretend I'm not fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a little shot on that note right there. How you doing, now? Go. How you doing? <laughs> nice mom, 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 daddy. Cheers, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm famous. I just got off TikTok. I'm blaming this guy fucking TikTok and Facebook at the same time. I'm blaming. Let's blame it. Black famous. <laughs> famous. Blame us. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Felix, you want to hit the button or do I? Uh no, you don't hit any buttons. Mug bugger. You just you just new booty up in here, dog. New fish. <laughs> new fish. So uh asking. you guys have a wonderful uh Taco Tuesday. Hope you had tacos. Hope you do your thing. Follow us tomorrow. We'll be on a bar. Still banging. And yes, we will I let you know. Tacos. And unfortunately, I'm sorry. Yes, it's short notice in a week. Be uh, bur- Barbecue and Bourbon Podcast could be live. I'm still working on the, on, the, on the issues, but it could be live with two barbecue legends that you want to watch in a world. I don't know anymore else. From the Pablo Podcast. Do it. So, Have a good night. Love you all. Peace. Peace.